everybody for joining us today, June 5th, on our regular council meeting. I will call the meeting to order. We have uh, Councillor Mady away tonight with the regrets. We acknowledge that this land is the traditional territory of the Three Fires Confederacy of the First Nations, comprised of the Ojibwe, the Ottawa, and the Potawatomi peoples, and of the Huron Wyandotte peoples. We value the significant historical and contemporary contributions of local and regional First Nations and of all the original peoples of Turtle Island who have been living and working on the land from time immemorial. Please stand for the national anthem. Okay, welcome everybody. Is our, I'm looking for our senior, is she here? Okay, all right. Any declarations of conflicts of interest from members of council? Okay, seeing none, I just wanna take a moment to recognize the life of uh, Julie Menend, or Menard. She uh, was one of the crossing guards for the town of Essex and our flags are lowered today because uh, she has passed away. Just wanna bring condolences to her family and. Thank you for her years of service doing the very important job of a crossing guard in the town of Essex. Looking for a mover of the uh, published agenda, and we need to amend it to defer Councillor Mady's notice of motion because he is absent. So looking for a mover to amend the Councillor Verbeek and Deputy Mayor Shepley. Any questions to that, Councillor Verbeek? Madam Mayor, is there any way we could uh, bump the presentation one as they're at the Civic Center right now, uh, bringing Mrs. Hayes back out of the building and loading her? Lisa will accept that as another amendment. All in favor of the amended agenda? That is carried unanimously. Adoption of the minutes of the May 15th regular council meeting. Looking for a mover and a seconder for that. Councillor Guerin, Councillor Hammond, any questions on those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor, and that is carried unanimously. We will go to public presentations in 8.2. Kelly and Andy, oh, uh, CAO Suite will introduce our consulting team. Mayor Bondi, so council tonight, I'm pleased to have Linton Consulting with us to present the Town of Essex 2023 to 2027 Corporate Strategic Plan. The corporate strategic plan is an essential tool that aligns organization efforts, establishes overall direction and priorities, and supports future de decision making. This strategy will help us define who we are as an organization and provide guidance on where we are going. The strategic plan provides us with a common focus and outlines priorities and strategies to be achieved over this term of council. This corporate strategic plan establishes a commitment from the organization to our citizens clarifying priorities and opportunities to best meet the needs of our community. It will help our community move successfully into the future by pursuing key areas and outlining activities for strengthening our municipality. At this time, I'd like to turn it over and introduce Kelly Linton and Andy Golden from Linton Consulting, who helped us develop our corporate strategic plan. So at this time, Kelly, I will turn it over to you. Thanks very much, Doug. And uh, uh, well, thanks for having us, and Mayor Bondi, members of council. Um, it's exciting for Andy and I, I to join you at the tail end of our project. We had a 
a very productive project with the council and the staff and we thoroughly enjoyed our time that we spent in Essex and sorry that we can't be there in person today but uh, you get to see the top halves of us anyway. Um, uh, what I, I have an executive summary that I'm going to go through because I, I'd be a lot longer if I went through all the details of the project plan but this exec executive summary is just a, a small um, portion of the final report that we provided to the town of Essex but we'll get to uh, the main parts here. So what I want to talk a little bit about today on page uh, two, am I controlling the slides? No, if you just tell us next page, our staff here can move them ahead. I can do that. Um, so we'll go on to the agenda page, page two, please. Um, so today uh, we want to talk a little bit about the project objectives and outcomes. I know Doug uh, got into the purpose of a, a strategic plan, so we won't spend too long there. Talk about the key success factors for this project, um, a little bit about our approach that we took, um, what we heard, especially from citizens, but also from staff, uh, the five goals that we came up with as a group, um, and then the strategic priorities and action that fall underneath those goals, and then I'll finish off with next steps and, and tracking pro progress. Next slide, please. So the objectives of the project was to, were to establish an action-oriented and results-focused strategic action plan to help Council work with the management team to establish a community-driven uh, common focus, outline priorities, and a doable action plan. There's a lot of words there, but there are a lot of important words there. Um, we wanted to make sure that we had meaningful citizen and staff feedback, uh, shared vision and common ground among council and members of the staff team. Uh, we wanted to make sure at the end of the day, um, we had practical doable actions, and then there was a, a tool for tracking progress and to demonstrate to council and to the community how you're getting the things that you said were priorities, how you're getting those done. Next slide. So the key success factors for this project, and this is what the, the senior team and council told us that we had to deliver at the end of the day. Number one, we had to use clear and simple language um, that would be understood by all readers. Number two, it had to be action oriented to enable effective tracking of progress. Uh, number three, it had to be practical, doable and set the team up for success, not failure. It had to be within the town's sphere of influence to appropriately establish community expectations on things that the town could actually deliver on. And the last one, it had to be a team building experience that uh, involved both council and staff playing different but complementary roles. Next page, please. So our approach, we took several uh, different um, uh, methods of, of this consulting engagement. The first thing we started off with is one-on-one -on -one interviews with members of the leadership team. And that meant members of council, the mayor, members of council, and the senior management team uh, to really get a lay of the land and to get uh, their thoughts on what they consider to be important priorities for the town before we went too far into this project. Uh, we also did a citizen questionnaire and got 489 responses back, uh, providing meaningful input into this process. We also got very uh, good feedback from the 51 staff uh, members who responded. Um, and then we did two uh, very interactive, highly collaborative uh, leadership team sessions, one in March the 23rd and the second in April the 12th. And you see a couple pictures on that and, the, and one of the boards from our sticky note session. Next slide, please. So there's a there's significant uh, appendices in the report that talks about uh, the fee the feedback that we received from citizens and from staff. So I just wanted to make sure that there's a couple of highlights brought uh, forward uh, tonight. Uh, the top two most popular responses to the question, what makes Essex a great place to live was number one, outdoor spaces, parks and trails, and number two, small town feel. Um, most important local government service to your household was safe and well-maintained roads. That came out pretty clearly. Um, in fact, safe and well-maintained roads was the only category where more respondents, 58%, actually preferred that the town increase spending and improve level of service when it came to safe and well-maintained roads. That's, that's a significant finding. And we asked staff the question, what can we do to ensure our staff know how much we appreciate them? The top response was to continue staff appreciation and recognition events and efforts. 
Next slide, please. So at the end of the day, um, when we went through all these different types of uh, interaction uh, processes, we came up as a group with four goals. Um, number one, safe and reliable infrastructure, and that's defined as embracing asset management best practices to build, maintain, and continuously improve our municipally owned infrastructure. Uh, goal number two is, is jobs and economic opportunities. Leverage your town's competitive advantages to promote jobs and economic investment. Number three, welcoming and caring community, take care of our natural environment and strengthen the sense of belonging to everyone who makes Essex home. And number four, responsible and people-focused government. Deliver friendly customer service in an efficient, effective and transparent manner while providing an exceptional working environment for our employees. Next slide, please. So in the next few slides, I'll get into a little bit more detail in each of those four goals. And what was important throughout the strategic planning process is we didn't just have some nice words on a piece of paper, um, but we had goals and then we were driving towards actions that fit underneath those goals. So the next few pages talks a little bit about the priorities and talks about the actions that fit underneath each of those four goals. Uh, number one, under safe and reliable infrastructure, four top priorities there, taking an evidence-based approach to infrastructure projects, make sure you're leveraging your asset management plans. Number two is investing in our roads. Um, it was clearly came out as one of the most important um, areas for uh, uh, spending for, from your citizens, and we wanted to make sure that that was a priority. Number three, optimizing the community benefits from our municipally owned buildings and properties. Make, make sure that you're doing as much as you can with the assets that you have that are municipally owned. And number four, providing reliable water, storm water, and wastewater services. So those are the priorities. And underneath those are some action highlights that I wanted to point out. Uh, move, uh, moving ahead with the roads master plan, a rebuilding Essex Road dedicated capital levy, um, best use plan for the Harrow High School property, extending water, wastewater services to McGregor. So some very clear actions that fit underneath the goal, safe and reliable infrastructure. Next page, please. The second goal is jobs and economic opportunities. And the three priorities that fit underneath those are optimizing land to increase employment opportunities. Uh, two is it fostering an environment that attracts and retains businesses and creates jobs. And number three is promoting tourism as an economic driver. So the act, some highlights of actions that fit underneath those priorities is use the community improvement plan or the CIP to attract new jobs. Very important, use grants and services to support local small, small businesses and job creation. Number three, position the town of Essex as a premier agritourism destination in Ontario. So some very aggressive, but very action-oriented um, uh, uh, actions that come out of that priority. Moving on to number th the third goal, uh, welcoming and caring community. Um, and we have five strategic priorities that fit under underneath this very important goal. Number one is collaborating with our community organizations and groups. Know that there's a lot of really great uh, organizations and groups in Essex, and we wanna make sure that the town of Essex collaborates with them and works with them. Number two is protecting our natural environment. Um, number three, expanding opportunities for healthy living and recreation. Number four, contributing to making Essex more affordable. And number five, managing our growth to maintain our small town feel. Some important actions that came out of that include enhancing the community partnership fund, expanding the tree and bench program, plant more trees, standard, uh, standard of shade for all parks, create an Essex housing task force and urban design guidelines. Again, clear actions underneath this third goal. Moving on to goal four, responsible and people-focused government. We had a lot of discussion about this one because this is a really important goal as well. Four priorities fit underneath that. Number one is diversifying our revenue sources to reduce reliance on residential taxpayers. Number two, providing open government and financial accountability improving two-way communication with citizens. Number three, recognizing excellence among our staff team, very important. Um, number four, promoting workplace flexibility and inclusion and diversity in the workplace. Some of the actions that fall underneath these priorities, potential sale of surplus municipally owned lands, uh, initiate a sponsorship slash naming rights program, new town hall events, uh, staff recognition efforts. So underneath each of those steps, we have a very uh, specific uh, 
the actions that fall underneath that. So the next page, please. So looking into next steps. So once council has approved uh, the content uh, for the strategic plan, we'll work with the team to complete the, the development of a strategic action plan that's designed to be read by the entire community. Um, the, the plan will include word for word, the content approved by council, of course, um, and it will be completed on time on budget in June. Next, pl not, next please. And the second thing that we committed to at the beginning of this project and something that council and staff said was absolutely important is making sure that you can track and measure progress on this plan. Um, and that's one of the reasons that um, Andy and I did some really good work in Center Wellington is we made sure that we, we communicated progress on every single one of the actions that have been identified. So this is a page uh, and, and several pages, probably about 30 pages of a template that we've provided to the town of Essex to track progress, for staff to track progress to council and to the community as well. Um, so it's called the Strategic Action Plan Progress Tracker. And it just I just provide an example here, goal one, safe and reliable infrastructure. On the one hand, on the one side, there's uh, the strategic priority at the top. This one is 1.1, taking an ev evidence-based approach to infrastructure project. Then a series of actions on the left-hand side, a target date that is to, to be completed, a, a lead department, and what percentage complete that is, and it's, and it's a color code symbol. This is just a template that we provided to Doug and the senior team. They will be filling this in. I've just put some, some uh, dates and some lead departments, but that's something that has to be completed by the senior management team and then presented to council on a, a semi-annual or quarterly basis, whatever um, whatever uh, the group feels is, is appropriate for the town of Essex. Next page, please. So that's all for me. I'm, uh, Andy and I um, are very appreciative of the opportunity to work with the town of Essex. It was a great project and I think um, because uh, council and the senior team uh, came to the table and we worked hard and we had re real workshops um, where we batted a lot of ideas across and, and we had some real good dialogue. And as a result of uh, the involvement of everybody in this room, um, we've created something that is special. It's, it's made in Essex and it's going to help uh, see some significant uh, results over the next term of council. Thank you very much. To thank you, Kelly and Andy, for presenting that, our strategic plan. It's, I feel like we got it done nice and early this term, so I'm really happy uh, with the product and uh, how engaged council, the community, and members of administration were. So thank you on behalf of council. And any questions, comments from members of council to our consulting team? CAO Sweet and then Councilor Verbeek. To you, Madam Mayor. I guess I just want to make a comment uh, to the consultants and thank them very much. This was the this was my second strategic plan that I participated in, and you certainly made it enjoyable. Um, it you know you gave us an effort to grow as a young council and uh, get to know each other, uh, and uh, you made a lot of work rather painless. So thank you. Um, well, in terms of administration, I want to thank Kelly and Andy for their work. Um, although your project is done, it's just a start for us. So just a few things for council. As you can see in our room, we have our previous draft plan. Um, our manager of communications is already working on updating those. So we'll be updating those. We'll be getting hard copies. You have a draft that you're seeing, but it truly is a draft. We're getting hard copies that will go out to everybody. We also go out to every one of our staff members and hand it out just to show how important this document is. So that will be happening. Um, council reports, if you notice now, every council report has their current six values and how every report relates, that is now amended to these four buckets. Um, so we're, we're just starting, we will meet and we'll report back, but this is exciting. Um, a lot of people in the public may not realize, but this is a, a document that's gonna drive how we go forward. So I do wanna thank you again, Kelly and Andy, uh, for getting us where we are now. Hey, oh, sweet. We look forward to that update at our next meeting on how far you are. <laughs> and uh, Kelly and Andy, you also said two words or four words that we like on time and on budget. So we're, we're happy with that. Uh, if there's no further questions, I'm looking for a mover and a seconder that we receive the 2023-2026 Corporate Strategic Plan, Councillor Hammond, uh, seconded by Councillor McGuire-Blaze. Any further questions? 
Seeing none, all in favor? You two got off a little easy tonight. <laughs> Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will double back to 8.1 Ontario Senior of the Year Award 2023. And our senior is uh, has made it into the building with her, yeah, with, with her grand uh, entrance. And I see that there's lots of members of your family here. So welcome, everybody. On behalf of the town of Essex, I would like to congratulate our 2023 Ontario Senior of the Year recipient, Joanne Hayes, who is here with us tonight. The Ontario Senior of the Year Award gives each municipality in Ontario the opportunity to honour one outstanding local Ontarian who, after the age of 65, has enriched the social, cultural, or civic life of his or her community. This year's recipient could not be more deserving. As a dedicated teacher for over 35 years, Joanne played an integral part in shaping the lives of many children. Her passion and care for the town of Essex runs deep. Throughout her lifetime, Joanne has dedicated countless hours to supporting local groups who, throughout her community. She, ser she served on school and church committees and helping those in need. The Essex Legion, the Board of Essex Retirees Social Club, the Essex Figure Skating Club, and the Canada Blood Services, just to name a few. In addition, Joanne has volunteered her time in most of the municipal, provincial, and federal elections. Anywhere Joanne can lead a helping hand, she does. You are truly an example of what we are lucky to have as part of our community here in Essex. She has also been blessed with a wonderful family, Kevin, Karen, Kirk, and Kim, who have made her very proud by their generous spirits of volunteering and helping in their community. They have brought her wonderful partners to the table, and she has 15 grandchildren and 17 great-grandchildren. Today would have also been her beloved husband's 70th, or sorry, 87th birthday. So on behalf, so it's actually really fitting that it happened today. And I couldn't be more honored as my first year as mayor to honor you. <laughs> on behalf of council and administration, I'd once again like to extend our congratulations. If you would like to say a few words, just press the, the mic there. Am I supposed to explain that we went to the wrong council chambers? <laughs> Do I have to admit that? <laughs> this is lovely here and everybody's close together and you can communicate well. And it's the first time that I see the new council all together. So far, everything's been going really well and I'm very proud of all of you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joanne and your family, and we'll get a picture. And it's residents like you that keep us on our toes. So keep staying involved. We'll go back there and we'll. Hayes and uh, Bernice families and all the other last names of <laughs> everybody. Yeah, everybody. Okay, we're gonna wait. Are you inviting everybody? Are you inviting everybody? No, I'm inviting you in. Just me, I'll. I don't care. <laughs> May as well do it quick. She'll have to. You'll have to stand here, Mom. Move forward so they can get her. Oh no, they'll get in front of you. They'll get in front of you. Let her hold the word or you. <laughs> Guys, can you come in the room so that they can get in? Sorry, Heather. Yes. Yeah. No, hang on. I'm going to go over yeah, there. Yeah, we'll just scooch. Yeah. Here we go. Sorry. This is only a piece of her family. Get in, Phil. I'm close. I'm getting close. Okay. All right. 
Congratulations. Don't want to break up the party. Go down to high school treats. Go out the garden. It's right Thank there. You. you can walk. Oh, hang up for me. I need the walker. Hey, I feel me ready. Then nobody. We got all the kids. Yeah. Any kids hiding in her around there? No, we got them. Well, that was fun. 8.3. We have a delegation here tonight. In the audience, Dana Dumfrey, Unifor Local 444 LGBTQ Committee, Stephanie Pest, Windsor, Essex, Rainbow Alliance, and Chris Brulard Coyle from St. Paul's Anglican Church regarding uh, the Pride Flag Crosswalk. So welcome. And when you when you speak, just make sure you push the button. And I you have 10 minutes. Is it is it two people? Oh. 10 minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I, my name's Stephanie Pest. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. Uh, I'd just like to uh, offer regrets for Dana Dumpy. She just got off work and won't be able to join us. And uh, Reverend Chris is here. Um, so, Your Worship, on behalf of my fellow delegates, I wish to thank you for this opportunity to address Council. Many cities and towns across Ontario and indeed Canada have installed pride painted crosswalks with the rainbow flag colors. Our neighbors in Amherstburg installed one most recently at the new North Star High School. Leamington has approved a rainbow crosswalk near the ferry terminal. And in Windsor, WIRA, organization I belong to, is organizing three pride themed crosswalks on Ottawa Street Corridor to be installed in time for this year's Pride Parade. Pride flag is a symbol of the ongoing vulnerability and discrimination of the 2S LGBTQIA plus community, but also of unity and hope. When it is displayed, it shows support and acceptance of the 2S LGBTQIA plus community within their city or town, a sense of belonging, the classic rainbow flag has six, six colors, each representing an important value within the community. Red represents life as in blood is thought of as a vital life force. Orange represents healing as it is a fun and celebratory color which promotes healing. Yellow represents sunlight, which is radiant and bright, stimulating new ideas and thoughts. Green represents nature a healing place associated with prosperity and growth. Indigo represents serenity, which soothes the soul. Violet represents spirit and is thought of as denoting pride. The emergence of the Progress Pride rainbow flag has recently been chosen design for pride painted crosswalk, which emphasizes and adds inclusivity to the rainbow flag with added colors and a chevron shape. The black and brown bands signifying the heightened marginalization of black and people of color folk within the pride community. And the fact that the pride movement begun at Stonewall consisted of black and people of color trans activists, such as Marsha P. Johnson. The pink, light blue and white represents the trans and gender diverse community. The most recent addition is the yellow with violet circle triangle and represents the intersex community. At this time, the Essex Streetscape project would be ideal to consider installing a progress pride rainbow flag crosswalk at a significant intersection in the downtown Essex center. 
Our delegation here tonight, representatives of Unifor Local 444 and their LGBTQ committee, Windsor Essex Rainbow Alliance, WIRA, and St. Paul Anglican Church and community partners are proposing that this crosswalk be in a significant location, perhaps the Talbot Street and Center Street intersection. We ask for your consideration in moving this project forward in the spirit of equity, diversity, and inclusion, the town of Essex could recognize the burden of cost. We would like to work with and collaborate with Essex Town Council and related town departments to bring our proposal to a successful installation. In closing, I would like to share a quote from a young member from the Essex 2S LGBTQIA community. She says, we need a permanent visible symbol that we live in this town. We want everyone to feel included and it would feel extra special to have this approved during June, which is recognized as Pride Month. Indeed, approval of this project not only displays Essex inclusivity, but belonging and goes further to be welcoming of all people. Now I'd like to yield my time to Reverend Chris. I just wanted to add on behalf of uh, St. Paul's Anglican Church um, that it's been such a wonderful experience to uh, come to this council each year for the last few years to invite uh, the raising of the pride flag during local pride events. And we've heard from mayors and members of the pride community how important that symbol is. And what we're here to do today is to ask that this council consider making that symbol something that's 365 days of the year, something that is part of our roadscape so that when we're talking about your strategic plan and that that welcoming, that the, the rainbow community feels welcome and included in Essex. Thank you. Any questions, comments from members of council? Councillor McGuire, please. Uh, thank you, the Chair. Um, I'm not opposed to the crosswalk. I just do, do have a couple of questions. One you answered uh, was location. So you're looking for um, Talbot and Center. And the second is, do we know the cost of of painting the rainbow? And uh, where do where do you expect the funding to come from? Thank you, uh, Councillor McGuire Blaze. Um, I have been uh, on the lead project of the Windsor uh, to three crosswalk, and uh, we have uh, sourced a local Windsor company for the paint. Um, at the for the three crosswalks in Windsor, it'll be approximately thirty five hundred. Uh, the artist that will be um, installing them. Uh, we're still working with them to get a cost proposal. So I don't know how much that is at the moment. Um, but like if, if we if we consider what, what happened in Leamington, they have allocated 25,000 for their one crosswalk. So I don't know what they're putting in there. Um, what you know, what it's going to look like, how big it is or whatever. But uh, I can say that uh, we are asking at this present time that the uh, Essex uh, cover the cost. But we we absolutely would love to work with you and uh, and work out something. Stephanie, Councillor McGuire, please, rebuttal. Uh, not not quite a rebuttal, but uh, uh, maybe for D uh, Director Jurcevich. Um, so do we happen to have an estimated cost of like, have we looked into it prior to this presentation on what this might cost us? And is there room in the budget for something between $3,500 and $25,000? Through the chair. So um, I'll defer the cost of the project to Council Gerard. I don't know if he's had time to pull um, or a director uh, or a suit. No, so neither of them. So, no, we don't have an estimated cost of the project. Um, I would say that typically, if it, it was 3500 in, in Windsor, I wouldn't see why it would be anything significantly different than that. 
um, this would be permitted uh, to be uh, allocated under the council contingency fund, similar to the signage uh, at the um, for the walleye in Colchester. So, um, council could make a resolution to allocate a certain amount of funds to be towards this project. Mr. Gerard, and then we'll go to Councillor Verbeek. Uh, through the mayor. So uh, we currently do not have anything approved in our 2023 operational budget for anything of this nature um, in public works. Um, however, um, like Director Jurisvic said, there there may be some opportunity in council contingency. Um, following, we did actually meet uh, with with Stephanie and and um, and her group about the 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 potential for a rainbow crosswalk within Essex. Um, they did provide some contacts at the city of Windsor that we did contact. Um, and what became um, very apparent is that the we do have an absence of a policy related to these types of requests. Um, the city of Windsor actually does have a policy on this, um, which is what they're following. Um, and my understanding from the city of Windsor is that they are actually supporting the initiative uh, from a traffic control perspective uh, only, and they also support them with um, the final line painting and touching up of, of that type of thing. Um, however, there are other communities that have decided to fully support this. But with the absence of a policy, we really have no direction from council at the moment on how to address this. Um, there is, with that being said, there is opportunity to look at changes to Talbot Street as part of the Essex Centre streetscape. Um, however, you know, how that's funded would have to be considered by council and direction provided to administration for that. Through you, Madam Mayor. So um, thank you to the delegates for coming and presenting. I just first wanted to say this just past few days, I was away at a conference and I was able to listen to an excellent speaker called Michael Bach. And, um, you know, one of the takeaways from that was that by creating an inclusive space, it, it's key to, to, to you know, to um, show that we're allies. So um, I think it would be really good for the town to um, show that we do embrace a diversity and equity and inclusion where, we just adopted our strategic plan and you'll notice in bucket number three one of the goals is um is um you know to to strengthen the sense of belonging to everyone who makes essex home and then in number four um it states clearly that um you know our practice is to remove any barriers of di uh, di diversity um and inclusion so I guess when the time comes, I'm, I would like to make a motion that we, um, as called for, that we receive the report. And sadly, I'm sure you know, because we're under this great streetscape, nothing is going to happen today as far as, um, you know, moving forward with a, a rainbow crosswalk. But I guess I'd like to add to my motion that we asked um, uh, for a report on, you know, costing and possible sources of funding to, to cover it. and. Um, this way, I mean, because of the streets game, we're not under any tight timeline to get it in by the end of this Pride Month, but at least if we could get a, ask for a report. Um, so when the time comes, I will make that motion amended to what it's here. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Verbeek. Deputy Mayor Shepley. Um, I'm supportive as well. I, the, the only question I would have, and I think with, with without having a crosswalk policy, I think it's maybe a bit early to to go ahead and just uh, blank check it. I think we need to know, you know, the upkeep, what what we're going to be looking at for that over the years. I mean, there there will be a cost, and how to handle this going forward when we have other groups come, because there there will likely be other groups come forward to see us requesting similar similar things, and I I think we should develop a well, while well, we have the time, we should develop a, a policy to, in order to deal with this and to get those answers on upkeep and maintenance uh, going forward. Thank you. Through the mayor. Uh, yeah, so I'm kind of along the same lines as uh, Councillor Beek. I mean, hearing from uh, Mr. Gerard that we don't have anything in place policy wise, I think we need to get that in place first. But just speaking on the matter, I mean, I'm, I definitely am in favor of recognizing diversity and inclusiveness, um, but I'm more inclined to probably support something that celebrates all groups and doesn't just highlight one group specifically. 
I think our town message, you know, to all of our people when you're traveling in, maybe through signage or whatever, it should just simply be town of Essex, recognizing diversity and inclusiveness. And that kind of pulls everybody into one. Into one. Um, maybe some better education for our residents to to uh, to get them more educated on on the on the topic in itself. Um, but for for tonight, yeah, I'm I'm definitely uh, not opposed to hearing recommendations come back from the administration before I make a decision on anything else. Um, I just have a question for Stephanie. The other uh, sidewalks are they the flag that's shown here, or is it different? Um, this is the newest flag. Um, that's what is being in, in, um, put in now in certain places, except for I seen in Amherstburg, they put in a ladder version, which is just the colors in block form. It's not a continuous, it's not a flag. It's just the colors of the rainbow. Um, but there's different versions out there. Like for instance, in, in Windsor, we have uh, the three different ones that we're doing, um, which is like the, this is the progress pride flag, the one that you have a, an image of. This is the two spirit progress pride to, to recognize the indigenous community, the two spirit community. And this is the trans flag, uh, which we modified to um, include the black and brown uh, colors for the uh, black and people of color folks. So there's there's a variety of flag designs that you can choose from. We, we are proposing that one, that's the most recent one. Um, if we're only gonna be putting one in, that would be it. Thank you. Any further questions from members of council? If not, Councillor Verbeek, you have a motion. Do you want to receive the delegation and make a motion at the same time? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, that would my motion would be to receive the delegation and to ask for a report. But I also just wanted to make a quick comment while we're on this, that this is in, this is Pride Month and it's really important. There's all kinds of opportunities right now to educate ourselves on the diverse, on the value of diversity and inclusivity. So I encourage people to take a lot of these educational opportunities that are available to us this month. And on that, I'll make my motion. Councillor Rubik has a motion that we receive the delegation and that we request a report from administration on uh, costs and material used, location supported by Uda Seconder, Deputy Mayor Shepley. And now we're speaking to the motion. Deputy Mayor Shepley. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I'm wondering if we could make maybe make a friendly amendment that we also bring forward with that report uh, a poll a potential policy for the crosswalks going forward. Okay, comments to the motion? I am in favor of the motion and I wanna thank you for coming forward and showing leadership in, in doing this on behalf of other folks in our community that uh, couldn't be here tonight. And I, I think it's a really good start. Okay, all in favor? That's carried unanimously. Congratulations. Okay, 8.4, Kim Lewis, the Grove Motel. You've been rather patient, so it's been fun though. It's been a great meeting. So we need a mover and a seconder that we allow Mr. Lewis to speak to us tonight. Deputy Mayor Shepley, Councillor McGuire Blaze, all in favor. And that is carried. Kim, just turn on your microphone. Mayor Bondi and members of council, I appreciate your time here tonight. Um, my name is Kim Lewis, and I'm here representing the Grove Motel in Colchester. We're here tonight uh, to request an accommodation to the sign bylaw for this property that's that's being built. If you've had the opportunity to visit a Grove location, you'll understand me when I say that the Grove is as much a destination as it is an accommodation. We're all about our guest experience, and we take pride in again being voted number three in a small hotel in Canada five years running, only to be beat out by locations in Vancouver and Kempville, actually. Um, the Grove Hotel is in the top 1% of 8 million 
listings and excellence and hospitality. So please understand that this did not happen by chance, it was by design. The easy answer for me would be to stay home tonight and just follow your current signed bylaw. However, we've given significant investment to the community of Colchester and our brand and our intended guest experience. Uh, we do not believe uh, would have the justice done or in helping to promote and attract uh, people to the area. Simply put, we're asking council to consider an accommodation to the sign bylaw for a sign that is 13 feet, six inches wide, three feet high on top of a one foot base. So a four foot overall height. This will allow us to provide our guests and other visitors with that Instagram moment, that unique moment when they're visiting the area. We feel that our proposed sign is as much of an art piece as it is a sign. So please understand as far as setbacks, uh, we're proposing that our sign is eight meters back um, when three meters is the minimum required. The height, we're proposing a four foot sign. We are able to go to six feet. Um, the sign is static. It doesn't um, scroll, it's not illuminated. It's specifically a sign. Um, it's gonna be stunning as the property is if you haven't already been out there. So to summarize, we're simply asking council for a width accommodation to an overall width of 13 feet, six inches, therefore allowing us to erect a sign as proposed to enhance our guest experience and to aid in promoting and attracting people to the area. Which from what I see from our earlier presentation, that's one of your goals. So I think we're aligned. Thank you. Lewis, any questions or comments from members of council? Councillor Allard and then Councillor Hammond. The uh, sign that's shown in your uh, presentation just says Grove. Are you putting the motel on there or just the Grove? Just Grove. Okay. And how will it be lighted? Just from the street lights that you have in the parking lot? And from the parking lot lighting, yes. Okay. That's it. Yeah, I find it hard to believe that you need a sign to in front of such a lovely building. It's quite uh, eye popping as it is. Um, my only concern, and I talked to administration regarding it, was about the uh, the sight line. From what I'm, I assume you're already aware, we have a contentious corner there coming off Dunn. Um, driving by there and seeing the, seeing the potential spot for where this sign will be erected. Um, it's hard for me to get a good gauge on the sight line due to the containers that are there in, right now, if you understand what I'm saying, because you have construction containers there, which impede looking at uh, the approaching cor traffic cornering. So unfortunately, the only place that I can see through is where your sign is potentially going. But the administration has assured me that this has been looked in and approved to by various uh, sources that need to look into those things. So uh, I think it's an adorable sign and uh, good luck. Definitely. Through you, ma Madam Mayor, I guess it's only a comment now because you answered the only question I had, which was about the illumination. And to be honest, I whispered to the deputy mayor, man, the Grove sign is groovy, just like the building. Looks great. Deputy Mayor Shepley. Mayor, my, my comments are saying the sign looks great. I think it's going to be, uh, and with the lack of uh, protesters here from Colchester, it must be okay with the, the Colchester crowd. So uh, welcome to the neighborhood. And I would, I'll move the motion when it's appropriate. Motion to receive the presentation and approve the exemption to bylaw 2167. Oh, sorry, Director Chadwick. Thank you, Mayor Bondi. Just for clarification, illumination under the sign bylaw does mean or could mean pot lights or uh, ground pot lights, and they are permitted in this particular district. And just for clarification, the reason why the Grove is not able to meet the provisions of the sign bylaw is because the property is technically zoned residential and so must uphold the regulations under the residential zoning district. For what it's worth, the property is designated as Main Street, if I'm not mistaken, under the official plan. Uh, so the only exemption that we are looking at tonight is in terms of 
actual sign face area, not the width. It's the sign face area, not the height, not the daylight corners, not the setbacks, not the media component, and certainly not the illumination, which is also permitted. So just the sign face area, two square meters is the maximum allowable. And the application is for 3.8 square meters. And that is being proposed, which is obviously a difference of 1.8 square meters. If you're talking imperial, that's less than 20 square feet. Thank you. I am not sure if we have a motion to receive the delegation and approve the exemption. Deputy Mayor Shepley, I needing a seconder. Oh, hang on. Okay, did you second that? She said she will. Okay, good. Okay, any questions or comments to that? I didn't catch it. I'm glad you caught it. Okay, all in favor? That's carried unanimously. Congratulations. And oh, before you leave, when are you expected to be open? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. Close, as you can see, but. From everything we do, we only get one chance to make a first impression. So I'm not going to give you a date, but we're closed. Okay. That was a very uh, politically correct answer, wasn't it? Uh, and so wow, I should be up there. The council approval is contingency on us getting the first selfie with the sign, you know, right? I think I read that in the in the fine tooth uh, wording there. Oh, okay. We have no unfinished business reports from administration. I'm planning 20. 2313 subdivision development agreement for residential development at 80 Maidstone Ave West, Ward 1. And we will go to our manager of planning here, Ms. Rita Jabor. Thank you, Mayor Bondi. And once again, good evening, Council. Uh, so we won't actually be having a full report from our manager of planning services. Uh, this report in front of you is in a subdivision agreement uh, for a plan of subdivision uh, back in April of this year, the county planner, who is the approval authority for plans of subdivision, issued a notice of decision to approve the plan of subdivision at the subject site, where a, you will see in the future a, a total of 42 dwelling units made up of both semi-detached and townhome dwellings. Of the approximately 40 conditions of approval that the county issued, the developer is required to enter into a subdivision agreement with the town of Essex, wherein the developer agrees to satisfy all the requirements, financial and otherwise, concerning various matters, such as the provision of roads, municipal services, and private utilities, to name a few. A subdivision agreement ensures the developer con constructs a subdivision that meets our town's development standards for such provisions, not only the sanitary services or water or storm, but also things like internal sidewalks, landscaping, lighting, as well as connectivity to area trails and parks. The purpose of this report is therefore to seek your authorization to enter into development agreement, which has been drafted according to the town's development standards, as well as in accordance to the various conditions as imposed by the county planner. It is important to note, however, that there are several other conditions that must be met prior to the commencement of construction including but not limited to approved servicing plans and reports, environmental compliance approval, performance securities, as well as approved construction management plans. We understand that the developer is quite close to meeting these last few various conditions, and we look forward to seeing the shovel return to the ground for this much anticipated development. Thank you. Comments from members of council, yeah. Councillor Verbeek. Well, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, I guess it would, this question uh, would be to uh, Director Chadwick. Um, so if we pass this agreement as it's presented uh, so that the developer can get underway with the project, is there the opportunity in the future for him to come back to administration and then bring it forward to council if there's changes he wants to make as we know he wants to make some changes to curbs and sidewalks and such is that um is is that some an option that's available to him um thank you madam mayor through you to council verbeek 
So the development agreement has been drafted in accordance to our current development standards manual. The current process for a developer to seek an exemption or to seek amendment to our standards is currently through seeking council approval. We have been made aware that there are some questions and some considerations that uh, we have been asked to deviate from certain standards under, um, under the development standards manual. The agreement before you does not speak to those variations or those changes. So the agreement forthwith is related to the development standards manual. I would suggest that the, the technical answer is that yes, a developer in theory could come back with seeking an amendment to a development agreement. However, as stated earlier, the conditions that are set forth in this development agreement that you see before you do meet the minimum standards for the town of Essex as drafted uh, through also much consultation with the developer as well as our partner agencies such as IRCA, county engineering, county planning, school boards, third party utilities, and on and on, as well as internal parties, community services, of course, infrastructure services, et cetera. So it's, it's been quite some time. Uh, and so in theory, yes, it's possible, but the, the agreement we see, you see before you is meets our very minimum. Madam Mayor. So my, so my concern is, um, I'm aware of a couple of the changes in the agreement as it's written that the developer was looking at. And, you know, um, okay, so the sidewalks, right? So if he comes forward to council and administration and asks that we um, look at that piece in the, in the agreement, um, we have the ability at that point, because Quite frankly, these are tiny, tiny, tiny yards, and I'm not a real fan about taking the whole yard up where these are supposed to be spaces for our children, for children to play. So, I mean, that's not tonight is not the night for that discussion. I fully understand that. If if we're going to pass the agreement as it is, I just want I want clarity that he can come back in front of us in the near future and have changes made if that's the desire of council. Rick, and then we will get uh, a motion on the table and we can talk to that. Thank you, Mayor Bondi. So in the de detailed design drawings, which my, my teammate, Director Gerard, can speak to, the detailed design drawings that are currently under review do not include removal of any sidewalks. In addition to that, not only does the development agreement with the town of Essex speak to that requirement, but also the conditions as imposed by the county planner who's the approval authority, speaks to requirements for sidewalks on Street A and Street B. So there are a, a slew of changes that would need to be considered. Moreover, there are also financial implications. There are design implications. There are connectivity and pedestrian movement implications that administration would need to consider and, and bring light to council in that decision uh, if faced with that request. Thank you. We, Mr. Branco is here and he's registered as a delegation, so we could make a motion to allow him to speak. Moved by Deputy Mayor Shepley, supported by Councillor McGuire Blaze. Any questions to that motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Okay, Mr. Branco, if you would like to speak, you have to turn on the mic, please. Good evening. Uh your worship and, and council and, and a six administration. I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Uh, for those administrators who've been here uh, for more than four years, uh, they do recognize 80 Maidstone as a, uh, a site that uh, has been long going. Um, and we uh, just give a quick background here. Uh, we originally um, went, uh, looked at the site uh, for an affordable housing rental uh, project. Um, and uh, we went through all the steps and the approval process and um, had uh, cooperation with the uh, um, council and administration of the time and um, had a shovel ready project 
Unfortunately, uh, one thing we lacked was uh, funding from upper levels of government. So then um, we uh, put that on hold and uh, uh, fast forward about two, three years later. Uh, now we have a new uh, council, a few uh, new members um, and, and obviously a lot of new administration within the town of Essex. Um, and we thought, um, let's look at this uh, site as uh, an, an attainable housing site. Um, currently right now, uh, the province has passed some bills that uh, I know in discussions with uh, administration, uh, with the county, uh, even with some of the council members, nobody really knows um, exactly what is expected uh, of us um, and, and, um, and what are responsible. One thing I can share with the uh, with council is uh, being a custom home builder um, in the in in all of Essex County. Uh, four or five years ago, what we were building uh, for six hundred thousand, it, it is now um, almost double that that price point. Um, obviously, uh, what was doable and attainable for some families, um, what, uh, if they could uh, originally were pre-approved for eight hundred thousand. Uh, now with the cost of living and everything else, interest rates, now it's, you know, closer to 500. So we uh, thought, let's get this project started. Uh, let's get a head start. And uh, in, in discussion with the administration, uh, they obviously have some um, internal um, reviews that uh, are in the process with their development manual, which will uh, discuss um, um, some uh, I guess cost effective measures uh, similar to a lot of the neighboring uh, municipalities that are using some special um, you know uh, water piping uh, products and curbs and and just looking at um, so again I am prepared today tonight to sign the agreement as a state however uh, once we all uh, get clarification on bill 23 and really uh, this would be would hit every point this development uh, it's infilling the infrastructure is existing on the site. Um, I mean, we even put a private sanitary line to the site just so that we'd, we uh, could make this a doable project rather than waiting for council to find funding and to extend their services. So again, um, I uh, thank uh, council and administration for the cooperation. I think we're all would like to see the shovel um, started finally after five years at 80 Mainstone. Um, but we recognize that once um, you know, we start building homes, which are, are our hope is by the fall, we will then have uh, more direct guidance from our province in stating uh, development charges and park fees and those items that uh, have already been implemented uh, through the Bill 23. Um, and uh, I'm here to answer any questions uh, if uh, council may have. And I want, to, I want to thank administration again for their time and cooperation throughout this whole process. Thank you. For sharing your side of the story and I think we all want to get the shovels in the ground and we've been our administration has been working really hard on this file to get to where we are today and if in the future you have your right to come to council if you have specific cost saving measures that you want to with that is your ability so right now I am looking for a motion that the planning report be received and that bylaw 2249 being a bylaw to enter into a subdivision development agreement and um, and also to receive the delegation of uh, Mr. Branco. Moved by Deputy Mayor, supported by Councillor Hammond. Uh, now, Council, if you have any questions or comments, Councillor McGuire, please. Here, uh, my question is um, to address Director Chadwick. Is there um, in the contract I was reading through? It doesn't give a timeline on the end of the contract when the developer has to have everything complete and, and signed over to us. So I do feel like there are a few sub subdivision areas in at least ward one where it's lingering and it's taking a long time for that, those subdivisions to be, to be signed over to the town. Is there a way that we can put a time limit on this? So that way we're not having another community just like linger and kind of be on hold. Thank you, Mayor Bondi, through you to Councillor McGuire-Blaze. 
I can speak to the timeline for draft approval and I can speak to the timeline an extension to draft approval. And then perhaps my teammate, Director Gerard, can speak to maintenance. I believe that's where you're probably getting to is maintenance and assuming the subdivision. So when the county issues a notice of decision to approve or draft approve a plan of subdivision, that those conditions that are listed must be met within three years. And if they're not met within the three years, the developer has the option to extend for another three years. For example, lighting, maybe there's, you know, electricity or, or hydro that's taking some time. So there's always the option to extend the draft approval. And then once final approval is then granted, only then would the developer be able to build and actually have those lots subdivided for construction of the dwelling. I will pass the floor to my teammate, uh, Director Gerard, to speak to the assumption of the subdivision, what happens after that, if I may. Excuse me. <clears throat> Through the mayor. So um, after construction is completed of the subdivision, um, as outlined in the development standards manual, um, every subdivision undergoes what's called a maintenance period. Um, so there's a point in which the engineer for the developer will request the town to accept the services. Uh, when the town accepts the services, we take over operation of those services. However, any costs and uh, maintenance related to um, replacements, deficiencies, things like that still are borne by the developer. Um, that period is for a minimum of 12 months. Uh, Oftentimes, uh, that also includes a uh, deferral of um, sidewalks and the top surface layer of asphalt. Um, so that's very standard practice to defer that um, uh, an additional year or into the maintenance period. Um, so then after acceptance of services, the 12 months have passed over maintenance. Um, the town will uh, request that the engineer uh, complete uh, additional sewer cameraing. Um, complete a walkthrough of the subdivision and ensure that all deficiencies are up to um, or remedied and, and there are no deficiencies and any remedy any deficiencies that exist to be repaired um, and then once those are repaired then the town will assume the subdivision where we become um, the full owner and responsible for the maintenance operation and costs of that subdivision does that answer your question um it does it does and it doesn't. Um, so last house is built. When the last home in that subdivision is built, how long is it 12 months from that point? Or does the developer get to decide when he's going to start his 12 months? Through the mayor, the the acceptance of the services is determined by the engineer and the developer. Um, they make the request, and as long as all deficiencies are remedied, then there's no issues with the subdivision. The town will will accept the subdivision. Um, it's not tied to home building. It's tied to construction and development of the and the construction of the services within the subdivision itself, not the actual home build. questions it's clear as mud eh? further questions and comments from members of council oh sorry councillor hammond the uh, uh, first it was not i guess it's directed towards uh administration uh i want to commend you on uh tackling these little pizza slices of property that Essex seems to be inundated with through no fault of their own, I'm sure, but it looks to be a, a total nightmare when I look at the plans and stuff like that. Question to the administration is, uh, I notice in these uh, these uh, um, these developments that uh, there's specific uh, lands allocated for green space or park land and other ones dedicated for stormwater management. Is there any appetite or is there reasonings? why the two can't be combined together, opening up maybe more space for potential homes. Well, uh, it's a pretty common practice in industry not to combine the two, um, mostly because the amenity space is a requirement of the Planning Act, I believe. So that would be better served for uh, my colleagues to the right. Uh, however, um, 
combining parkland with stormwater management isn't necessarily ideal because those are places that we store stormwater. It can be often dangerous as amenity spaces. Um, so utilizing stormwater management ponds for parkland isn't isn't necessarily recommended by administration. I get that, but under these circumstances with uh, such a uh, awkward piece of property and stuff like that, um, perhaps we can find some uh, common ground is to maximize some of our living quarters. In this uh, particular circumstance, it is adjacent to a pre-existing park, so we are taking cash in lieu for this. Uh, we did sell a portion of the rear property for their use for housing and i believe the location of the stormwater management ponds was because of the awkward shape the triangles it was easier for them to fit that in and leave other areas for housing rather than uh figuring out, figuring out a different solution for that questions or comments from members of council we do have a motion on the table okay all in favor congratulations walter <laughs> Ten point two planning. <laughs> planning twenty twenty three sixteen site specific zoning for seven nine three County Road fifty East. Recommended actions at the planning report entitled site specific zoning County Road fifty East. Prepared by Kareen Chason, senior planner, dated June fifth. Be received. And that council approved bylaw 2251 being a bylaw to amend bylaw 1037, the comprehensive zoning bylaw for the town of Essex. He read a first, second, and third time today in a public meeting was held earlier today on this, supported by Deputy Mayor Shepley, or sorry, moved by Deputy Mayor Shepley, supported by Councilor Verbeek. Any questions on this specific zoning? Seeing none, all in favor? That is carried unanimously. And that is for the wagon, if anybody's watching. 10.3, planning 2023-17 site-specific zoning bylaw, 14 Wilson Ave. Recommended actions, that planning report, site-specific zoning bylaw amendment, 14 Wilson, prepared by Corrine Chason again, in that council approved bylaw 2252 being a bylaw to amend 1037, the comprehensive zoning bylaw, to permit the construction of two residential dwellings on the ground floor of a mixed commercial building located at 14 Wilson Avenue, be read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed today on June 5th, and that earlier rezoning meeting was held this evening as well. Looking for a mover and a seconder for this one. Councillor Verbeek, Councillor mcguire Blaze, any questions on this particular rezoning bylaw? We did ask a lot of questions tonight. You can watch it on the earlier meeting. All in favor? And that is carried. Opposed? Do you want it noted? Okay. 10.4, environmental services, 2023-02, results of request for tender, supply of backhoe loader, environmental, recommended actions. Need a mover and a seconder, that environmental services report, 2023-02, entitled results of request for tender, supply backhoe loader, prepared by Rob Mackey. Manager of Environmental Services, dated June 5th, be received in that council award the request for tender of the supply backhoe loader to Brant Tractor in the amount of 196000 including non-refundable harmonized H or sales tax. Deputy Mayor Shepley, Councillor Allard, any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried unanimously. Capital Works and Asset Management. 202307 Jackson Street Colchester improvement council feedback and administration recommend recommendations. We will uh let's get a mover and seconder and then we'll go to Director Gerard. A move by Councillor Guerin, supported by Councillor McGuire Blaze, and uh, Director Kevin Gerard from Infrastructure Services has a few comments here. Thank you. Uh through the mayor. Yes, I just want to provide a quick synopsis of the report and uh, some of the um, and explain some of the feedback that was received from council. So uh, at the previous meeting at council, um, you were presented a recommendation to convert Jackson Street into a one-way and provide designated parking in one of the lanes um, to address parking concerns as, um, as was previously requested by the previous council. 
Um, following de deliberation of the proposal, uh, council moved to postpone that recommendation for council to provide the feedback to administration. Um, administration did receive feedback and determined that council didn't really have an appetite for uh, changing Jackson Street to a one way. Um, however, did mention that additional parking needed to be found to accommodate the park and a beach. Um, therefore, it is recommended that council cancel the proposal to convert Jackson Street into a one way. Um, but additionally, um, since there were a lot of comments from council regarding parking concerns in the Colchester area as it relates to servicing the park and the beach, um, council would have the option during the 2024 budget deliberations to make a request for uh, administration to provide options for parking within the Colchester area. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Dr. Hammond. Um, yes, uh, I noticed that we have some money left over from our uh, assessment or whatever. Would it, um, and obviously this parking dilemma is not going away, would it, uh, uh, if it pleases council, could we maybe use those funds to reassess um, and maybe direct the uh, person doing the assessment to uh, include possible uh, uh, paid parking spaces for say premium parking and to maybe include uh, so, uh, incorporating some of the underused uh, park space that we have designated up there. I'm just wondering if there's an appetite for that. Yeah, sweet. Thank you to you, uh, Mayor Bondi. I think with that, until we know what a plan is, it's hard to allocate any costs to at this time. And also in the previous budgets past council, we have brought for park and display. And that is something that uh, in this case, Director Morissette could bring forward as an option in the 2024 budget. Um, but to put money where we don't know what a solution is yet, I think um, a lot of the stuff you brought up is stuff we can do internally and have been doing internally. Motion on the floor right now to receive the report. I think administration can come back with further information on parking options. We do have the leased property now. Any further comments to the motion? Councillor Guerin? Please. Thanks through the chair. Um, I just, um, I want to ask when do we come back for 2024 budget? I know that it's different this year coming around. So when does that happen? So it's actually on tonight's agenda. So I'll, I'll be speaking on all the deadlines in just a few minutes. This, this exact, like the, the process for submitting council requests, is that what you're referring to? Yeah. So um, they'll, I'll speak on it in a little bit, um, but basically council will have an opportunity to submit requests to administration. Sorry, through the chair. Um, but so I understand that, but when does it come back to us that we can see it? Like when does, like when do we, I'm sorry, I'm not explaining it properly. Through the chair, like a draft budget. Yeah. When, you, when you'll when you see it. So uh, at the end of November, you'll receive a, a printed draft um, and we plan to deliberate in December. Uh, yeah, through the mayor. So um, the town of Essex actually partnered with the county of Essex this year 
um, by and in, in exploring uh, economies of scale um, through their asphalt program. Um, so the town currently tenders, you know, probably close to a quarter of what the, the county of Essex would tender or less. Um, so through partnership with the county of Essex infrastructure division, we actually um, included our projects, our hot mix tender uh, projects with the county of Essex tender to take advantage of some economies of scale. And as you can see, we we uh, we pretty pretty well saved about 33% on our overall tender um, from our budgeted value uh, for 2023. So um, we're hoping that th this is going to be a, a long lasting partnership that will be successful this year and we can continue to work uh, in partnership with the county to try and realize some cost savings for Essex. Any questions to the motion? Great work, team. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. All in favor? That's carried unanimously. Operations 2023-05, results of the single axle plow truck and winter control equipment. Need a mover and a seconder that the operations report entitled results of the single axle plow truck and winter control equipment prepared by Norm Nucio, manager of operations and drainage. Be received in that council. Award the request for tender. RFT ID 23012, supply of single axle plow cab and chassis 2023 to carrier truck centers in the amount of 163,000. In that council award, the results for request for proposal RFP ID 23015, supply of winter control equipment for a single axle plow truck to Viking size limited in the amount of 152,000. And that council approved the additional. 2,792 to be funded from the asset management reserve. Looking for a mover and a seconder. Councillor Verbeek, Councillor Allard, any questions to that? They have to do a little bit better there, eh? Like Councillor McGuire, please. <laughs> Thank you through the chair. I have a question for um, Director Jard, maybe. Um, do we negotiate this price when it comes back to us? So like get it within budget? To the mayor, uh, we have an obligation to follow procurement, our procurement bylaw. So it's a competitive process um, in accordance with CFTA and, and any provincial and federal legislation. Um, so unfortunately, uh, the competitive tendering process doesn't allow us to negotiate pricing. Um, However, it did go, undergo a competitive process through tender that uh, that is realized over the entire nation, really. Um, through our bids and tenders program. Seeing none, all in favor. And that is carried unanimously as well. 10.8 infrastructure services, impacts of CLI ECA. Let's go to Director Gerard for this before we get motion. <laughs> Thank you. So, I uh, just wanted to take a moment to present uh, the report. It's a fairly lengthy report uh, with some sub substantial impacts to the town of Essex. Um, so since since the 1970s, anytime an expansion occurs for stormwater management or sanitary sewers um, within the town, uh, whether it's initiated by the town for a capital project or de the, the development community, there's a requirement to obtain what's called an environmental compliance approval. Um, which is all the acronym is an ECA. Um, so we've already heard that tonight for uh, the AD Maidstone development, the, the development itself, because it requires an expansion to the town's sanitary and stormwater system, requires what's called an ECA. And that has been um, approved by the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks um, until now. So uh, the ECA essentially sets out the approval for operating and maintenance requirements for the town for town owned infrastructure. Um, to date, the ECA permission framework um, has been onerous, it's been very lengthy, um, and du duplicates work efforts of the municipality because essentially what we're reviewing at our level, um, the Ministry of Environment is also um, reviewing as part of their process and approval authority under the ECA program. Um, the, the MECP review time uh, was a very lengthy process, as I mentioned, it would take typically six to eight months um, to receive an ECA. So um, for instance, um, you know, to, to utilize the 80 Maidstone development as an example, 
Um, the typical process would be to enter into the development agreement, proceed to approval of detailed design drawings, stormwater management plans, um, and any real reports related to sanitary and stormwater for that development. Um, once that approval has been issued by the town, uh, the developer would actually have to apply to the Ministry of Environment for, for an ECA, and that process would take an additional six to eight months. Um, and construction could not begin until that ECA was received by the developer. Um, what's happened now is that the MECP has now delegated this authority to municipalities through a pr process called the Consolidated Linear Infrastructure ECA, um, so also commonly called the CLI ECA. Lots of acronyms. Municipal government's great for that. Um, but uh, essentially what that CLI ECA does is it replaces all former individual ECAs and in essence it voids them. Um, and puts them all under the umbrella of the CLI ECA. And it allows the town to approve any low risk infrastructure expansions um, within the municipality. <clears throat> Unfortunately, with any provincial download comes some major impacts to municipalities, um, four of which were identified in the report before you, which were the impact of additional studies that were required as part of our CLI ECA, which are included in your agenda package. Um, the implication for application fees and cost recovery of services provided by the town for these for this new process. Uh, potential staffing impacts for um, reviewing and managing the CLI ECA program and also any additional operational impacts that may come as part of those additional studies that are mandatory. Um, requirements of the CLI ECA program. So firstly, the impact of additional studies. Um, so in addition to the approval authority set out in the CLI ECA, the ministry also created mandatory requirements for the town to conduct additional studies as part of the operation of stormwater and sanitary systems. These studies require additional funding. Uh, no funding is being provided at this time by the ministry. Um, therefore, it's the municipality's responsibility to find funding sources for these studies. Um, any additional costs for these studies will come as a future um, budget consideration or uh, through some level of report. So no additional studies will be undertaken without um, authorization from council. Um, but you can expect to see those uh, within the 2024 budget uh, or sooner. The application fees um, are the other major impact that I mentioned. Um, so the CL, the ECA process has always had a fee um, associated with it to recover the cost of the province to review uh, and issue approvals for ECAs. Um, the, the, the ministry has actually permitted the town to collect a similar fee, which can be set out by the municipality. Um, this fee will help aid the town in recovering the cost for any staff time burdens or those additional studies that I mentioned. Um, so included in the report was uh, an, an analysis of a com of comparative municipal CLI ECA fees from uh, different municipalities of varying sizes uh, within the province who have actually implemented fees or have actually received their ECAs. There are some municipalities that have not received their CLI ECA yet. Um, so there are still some working through of a lot of municipalities to try and get this going. Uh, unfortunately, with the amount of development that's occurring within Essex County and the town of Essex itself, um, there were a lot of ECAs uh, issued in our region very quickly. Um, so that analysis has been included in your package and the um, recommendation for setting town of Essex fees also included. So in terms of staffing impacts, so since the town has never completed ECA reviews, um, we're not adequately staffed to do so. Um, we currently undertake um, development reviews internally um, to the best of our abilities. And we also utilize a third party um, engineering reviewer to uh, complete engineering reviews for all of our development applications as well. So to accommodate the demands of the program and the mandatory downloading of this program to the municipalities and to the town, um, as well as assisting with development and capital project reviews, administration will be requesting a new position and a future personnel committee request. And then lastly, the last impact is the operational impact. So as I mentioned, um, the CLI ECA program uh, could have a su substantial operating impact to the town as a result of those mandatory future, mandatory future studies. Uh, any impacts to operating will come to council either through future council reports or budget requests. Um, 
until those studies are completed by the town and uh, and we can actually realize what the impacts will be to our operating budget and to our operations in general, what those requirements may be. Um, we can't really estimate it at this point, but uh, I did want to make it aware through report that those impacts will there will be an impact to the town uh, from those studies. We just can't we just can't determine what that impact will be at this time. So it's a lot of information to absorb. It's uh, certainly a large provincial uh, download to the municipality. Um, in 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 its totality, it will serve the development community and the town a lot better. It will shorten length the lengthy process that is taken to issue ECAs now. Uh, we'll be able to issue them fairly concurrently with development review, which will expedite develop the development process within the town um, and certainly cut red tape, which is exactly what the province is looking to do. However, these impacts are fairly significant and, and need to be um, addressed over time. So I'm happy to answer any questions if there's any from council. Gerard, any questions from members of Councillor McGuire, please. Sorry, through the chair. So um, how many of these um, ECAs do you think that we do in a, in a year? And would it be a full-time staff member that we're looking to hire? Is there enough work um, for a full-time staff member? Or like on average, how many do we do? Um. Yes, there's certainly enough work for one full-time staff member, um, not only just to manage the EA program, but also to assist development reviews um, and capital project reviews. Um, it's very difficult to estimate the number of ECAs that the town will have to issue. And the reason I say that is because it depends very much on the market and how many developments occur um, within the town. But like I said, also, um, the town's infrastructure is also impacted by ECAs. We need to issue our ECAs to us, in essence, to ourselves. Um, so we will actually have to undergo that process for any expansion to storm, storm sewers, stormwater management ponds, sanitary sewers, pump stations, all of those types of infra large infrastructure. Um, so there will be a significant amount of work there for an individual. Um, but as I said, it's very difficult to estimate because it it does vary based on uh, the market conditions of of development within the within the community. So um, when we pulled together some figures um, to generate what exactly the application fee should be in 2023 alone, we're expecting seven ECA applications from just the development community alone, uh, not incorporating any future expansions to town owned facilities or improvements. Yes. In 2023 is what we're expecting for 2023. Members of council, I think we should make a list of uh, recent items that are getting downloaded on to us and invite our local MPP to our council chambers and talk to him about some of the financial things that we're, our taxpayers are now take on. Just my thoughts. Looking for a mover and a seconder that infrastructure services report 2023-03 entitled impacts of CLI ECA prepared by Kevin Gerard, Director of Infrastructure Services, be received and that council de delegate authority to the Director of Infrastructure Services for the purposes of completing sanitary and stormwater alterations in the town of Essex, including the approval and the imposition of terms and conditions for works to be undertaken in accordance with the town's consolidated linear infrastructure environmental compliance approvals as required, and that council direct administration to bring council proposed changes to bylaw 1924, being a bylaw to delegate duties and powers of the council of the town of Essex to affect the foregoing. Deputy Mayor Shepley, Councilor McGuire Blaze. All in favor. Carried unanimously. Infrastructure Services 2023-04 McGregor Lagoon Expansion Environmental Assessment EA. Looking for a mover and a seconder. <laughs> that Infrastructure Services Report Entired McGregor Lag Lagoon Expansion Environmental Assessment. There's little, there's little ones looking out at our window. It's cute. 
prepared by Kevin Gerard, Director of Infrastructure Services, dated June 5th, be received. Then council approved the expenditure of 160,000 toward the cost of the McGregor Sanitary Environmental Assessment from the Development Charges Reserve. It is pretty self-explanatory, but if anybody has any questions, Councilor McGuire, please. Uh, thank you through the chair. Um, this might be a question for uh, Director Chadwick. Um, it, the report talks about um, we have, there's development coming to McGregor, which is why we feel the need that we need to do this, to do this study. Um, how, how much of the development in the McGregor area is on the Essex side as opposed to the Amherstburg side? For you, Mayor Bondi, I'm just going to pull up the report. So I believe in our report, we spoke to development in the town of Essex on the Essex side, unless I'm mistaken. It was just the Essex side, wasn't it? Yeah, so so our lands, uh, the settle secondary settlement area in McGregor uh, has lands that are designated for growth. And do, are you asking to quantify in terms of number of acres or number of units? Um, I'm more I'm more curious to know at the moment, do we have plans for development in Essex McGregor or are there plans for development in Amherstburg McGregor? Is that why we're we're doing the study? Thank you. Once more through you, Mayor Bondi. So there are both. So we do have lands within the Essex side of the border that are designated. I would say that we have more in terms of quantity of lands that are currently designated that don't have capacity than Amherstburg does, but there are lands on the Amherstburg side of the border that are designated that also don't have capacity. So the shared, uh, say, vision for, you know, considering what are the options in terms of these particular sewage lagoons, uh, there are applications I can speak to in with the town of Essex that we cannot accept, unfortunately. And those applications for rezoning or plan of subdivision, even site plan for rentals, uh, they are at a standstill. And we're looking at a few hundred dwelling units that we have the ability to see, uh, but we just can't accept those applications because there is no current servicing plan to address the uh, lack of capacity. Wire Blaze, Councillor Hammond, then Deputy Mayor Shepley. Yeah, um, I'm just wondering if uh, the cost of this report can it can this report then be used in the uh, report required for our uh, our previous uh, our new uh, CIL. Don't we have to do a report on the uh, sanitary uh, situation regarding our our new uh, government uh, requirements regarding the uh, CIL or ECAs? Through the mayor. So the the EA process and the ECA process are a little are different. So the EA process is a planning process to look at the options for expanding the McGregor Lagoon system, which is the report in front of you. The ECA itself would be issued would be issued um, to actually build and operate and maintain such an expansion. So it would come after the EA process, after the construction of of any type of expansion to that facility. Um, and maybe something I should have mentioned in the previous report is that, uh, or I did mention that it's for low risk infrastructure. So the CLI ECA program is um, for alterations or expansions to low risk infrastructure, such as sewers, pump stations, things like that. However, the, uh, the Ministry of Environment will still be the approval authority for large scale high risk projects like lagoon expansions, uh, sewage treatment plants, things like that. Mayor Shepley and then Councillor Verbeek. Do you, Madam Mayor? Um, my my question is just basically, we're going to spend half the money for this. I understand there's no, uh, um, this is just an EA, but in the end, 
if we continue to go with hoppers with Amherstburg on this, are we, is this a first come first serve basis for capacity or, or do we get a guaranteed allotment of capacity so that we can justify the expense on the Essex side of the border out there so that we make sure we get the development that, that we're paying for? Mayor, so that's an excellent question. Um, so right now we're at the planning process stage, which is the, the EA itself. Um, however, um, we have not had discussions with Amherstburg on exactly who will be paying for what, uh, what the EA recommendations will be for that matter. Um, we suspect that it's going to be some expansion to um, the, the lagoon or a mechanical plant of that kind of nature. Um, but if, if the town, when that time comes, the town will explore those options. The commitment now is to look at the planning process, what would have to be done in order to expand the lagoon system and expand service and capacity for the McGregor area. Um, all of those future decisions on uh, what the expansion will be, how much it will cost the municipality, how much capacity each community will receive. Those are all discussions for future that would have to be made by council and would have to be brought before council. So um, this is really just authorization to proceed with the planning process to determine what the expansion looks like. You, Madam Mayor, just to comment on this, and, and then I, I'd be happy to make the motion, but um, for me, I'm just really relieved to have this, to be moving forward towards this. I'm really grateful that the council in Amherstburg have um, agreed to pay for half of this. Since the beginning of last term, I've been made aware of the need for this. And um, we're not like looking at, as, as Director Gerard said, this is just the first step. This is um, to look for the solution, right? If it, and um, this is the beginning, but at least we're taking that step. And I, for one, like I say, I've been aware of the need since I first came on, but you know, um, have, you know, running out of space, running out of space was always the talk. Well, we're there and we have developers that are, you know, sitting back with their, on their hands, ready to put, you know, shovels in the ground and build in McGregor and they can't because we can't support them. So this is just the first step in looking at ways to, um, you know, to prepare for that. So I, for one, am happy to move this. Councillor Allard, I just have one question to Director Gerard or Director Chadwick. Do we have, so we hand over the money. What's the timeline look like? And I probably know we can't answer that, but. So the, the next step in the process um, would be uh, the procurement of an engineer to complete the EA, um, which will be completely, all of the administration, procurement, everything would be handled and completed by the town of Amherstburg. Um, so they would actually undertake the EA process, procure the engineer. Um, an EA of this nature um, is likely 14 to 16 months um, to complete. Um, there are public consultations that have to occur as part of that project. Um, review agencies, ministries that need to be contacted, um, very similar to the EA that you'll be receiving um, in July for the Colchester EA. Um, so that process will probably take you know, probably close to two years by the time they procure procure and and complete the project. Questions? Seeing none, all in favor? That is carried unanimously. 1010 Economic Development Business Retention and Expansion Plan. And we have uh, Nelson Silvera here, our Manager of Economic Development. So welcome, Nelson. We'll pass it over to you. You're nice and fresh here. Thank you. Uh, through you, Your Worship. Yeah, thank you for having me here tonight. Uh, I wanted to touch on the Business Retention and Expansion Action Plan uh, that uh, was developed by Deloitte. Um, this plan comes as a, a recommendation from the previous council that aligned with the council strategic priorities from uh, 2019 to 2022. Uh, and I'm happy to say after the presentation from uh, Linton tonight, uh, this action plan also aligns with uh, Council's new strategic plan, uh, which looks at fostering business retention and expansion. So um, back in um, February, you heard from Deloitte, who presented in front of Council, uh, looked at the survey results um, and identified some priority areas uh, that were repeated by businesses that we needed to address. 
Um, overall, the survey was commissioned to engage the broader business community while also allowing for the identification of potential expansion or retention opportunities within the municipality. And administration has identified those and been following up with businesses that were either red flags or green flags identified within that uh, within that survey. Um, so we conducted the survey of over 100 businesses um, and identified um, opportunities and challenges that those businesses were facing and how we could address them. So some of the key items that were uh, brought forward by Deloitte that needed a little bit more attention. Uh, overall, the satisfaction of, of business owners in the town of Essex from this uh, survey in particular was at about 91%. Uh, and 25% of the businesses indicated that their level of satisfaction was more positive than 12 months ago. Um, now, uh, some of the priority areas that we need to address are the availability of uh, post-secondary programming that aligns with business needs. 54% of businesses um, showed dis uh, were dissatisfied with that. Availability of unskilled and skilled labor availability of adequate housing and affordability of commercial space and rent release. So if you look through this action plan, Deloitte has identified strategic actions that, uh, or roadmap, as you will, uh, that administration can follow uh, over the next 12 to 18 months to ensure that we're implementing some of the recommendations that are coming out of this action plan. Um, we're looking uh, as administration right now to identify what capacity we have to, to complete the actions over the 12 to 18 month period. Uh, identified, identifying some short-term wins and some long-term goals. Um, so this is what we're working on right now, and uh, this provides a roadmap for us over the next 18 months to work on uh, business retention expansion items uh, that are directly related to this action plan. So if council has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Questions from council? Council McGuire, please. Thank you, through the chair. Um, I think we all know what the tr that our businesses have been going through a trying time the last three years, especially in Ward One. It's continuing with with the streetscape. So to to have somebody come and tell us what we already knew, um, some I'm I'm really surprised by um, the the four key factors: secondary programming. I, unskilled labor, adequate housing, and affordable commercial lease. I'm not sure how I, I'd like somebody to explain to me um, how our administration can do can do any of that with post secondary. How is that a, a municipal problem or housing? Uh, I mean, we're working on housing, but in affordable commercial space, we can't we can't control rents. So, can you explain to the public and the businesses, what we can do here? Yeah, absolutely. And through you, uh, your mayor, uh, your worship. Um, as I mentioned, we're identifying the uh, actions that are in this plan to see what we can complete short term and long term goals and to see what exactly is applicable. We've had conversations with Deloitte uh, to ensure us that uh, we're able to meet some of these actions. Um, I think that you're you're onto something here with you know uh, some of these actions may not be exactly relatable and we need to see um, what's going to be the best uh, actions that are going to benefit businesses directly and we're identifying those right now so some short-term wins is looking at what we currently have in terms of one of the action items was around available properties like you're saying we can't convert we can't control uh, prices of commercial properties but what we can do is uh, create more um, availability of property through our online available properties tool. So giving people more options. Um, in terms of controlling price, we can't do that. Um, but reviewing uh, the resources that we have available for businesses and giving them more opportunity to access funding externally, um, looking at different action items that um, are directly related to business retention expansion. I think this report does a good job of doing that. We have to identify uh, as a administration and what's realistic and what's not, re not realistic, and we're going to do that for the next 12 to 18. Thank you for that um, through the chair. I also, I'm also wondering if um, I can request for you to come to the, a BIA meeting and and present this um, to to them because possibly you can work with the BIA um, and help some of these businesses. I mean, we 
this, I don't know when this was done, but it was presented to us in February and it says seven of these businesses are going to go out of business in six months. So they're probably out of business at this point. If there's a way for us to, I was hoping for, through this, we would be able to say, okay, they're looking for us to bring people. I know that our businesses are struggling with employment because they can't afford to pay another employee. That's, that's the issue. So I was just hoping that this would be a little bit more useful, <laughs> useful to, to the everyday business owner. Your worship. Um, in terms of the businesses that I identified as red flag or green flag for follow-up, we have followed up with those specific businesses uh, and we are, are following up with them after uh, our initial follow-up to see how they're doing, whether it's finding a new space or uh, if they're closing, how we can help mitigate that or find them a new space or connect them with grant funding. We've made those follow-ups. Deloitte's made those individual follow-ups and as a municipality and administration, uh, we value the business community. We want to keep them here, right? That's all part of business retention. Um, so we followed up with those individual businesses that were identified in this action plan. Uh, I would be more than happy to come to the BIA because I think there's definitely some synergies there in terms of the work that we do and how we can um, partner to make um, businesses in Essex um, more aware of some of the opportunities that are available. Uh, in terms of the actions, more than happy to, to partner with the BIA or the or the chamber. Absolutely. Barbie? Through you, uh, Madam Chair, I guess most of it, my thoughts were were already answered now, but um, like I, I thought that this survey was an excellent tool for you to, to run with. And it's pretty clear that with this, this follow-up report that, you know, you guys are, are using the the tool that 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 this this is and you're you've engaged. I love that you you know the following up with the green flags and the red flags. It'd be really cool if you could follow up with everybody that participated in the study, right? I and I sure hope you can. Is it is it you um only you, Mr. Severa, that's following up with them all, or do you have a little team or um because I think I think using this information with the follow up is the key. You know, it's really good for nothing if you're not doing the follow-up that you're talking about, which I, I think is great. Yeah, uh, through your uh, your worship, I think you bring up a good point. It's it's capacity and 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 resources, right? So, uh, business retention and expansion is is one thing that we focus on. We also focus on a variety of different sectors, um, priorities that council identifies. So, uh, yes, it's me right now. We have our summer student working on uh, kind of dissecting this report and coming out with the short-term wins, like I was saying. Uh, that we're going to be focusing on in the next 12 to 18 months. But yes, it's it's just myself for now. So it's just you picking up the phone and doing the follow-up. Well, thank you. Mayor, um, I didn't take part in the survey, but I know one thing that a lot of the businesses need, and that's bring people to town, the Essex Center, Harrow, McGregor, Colchester. That's what we need more than anything in that those customers will allow us to hire the people and pay them to work and that's that's the, probably the biggest thing that you guys can do and that's through the bia to council and everybody in the community supporting us and that's that's probably a 100 percent top of the list thanks members of council seeing none looking for um we don't have a motion right but Looking for a motion that the economic development report entitled business retention and expansion plan prepared by Nelson Silvera, manager of economic development dated June 5th be received. Deputy Mayor Shepley, Councillor McGuire Blaze, any questions? All in favor? And that is carried unanimously. 10, 11, community services, 2023-18, special events resource team, our CERT June update. We will go to Director Morissette first, and then we will get a motion to receive it. Thank you, Mayor Bundy. And I'm here to bring a quick discussion on some fun times for this uh, late spring, early summer. Um, over the next month, we've got uh, this upcoming weekend, actually, the Colchester Walleye Derby uh, with the Rubber Duck Derby as well. So make sure you swing by there this weekend. It's going to be uh, a lot of stuff going on, family-friendly fun. Um, 
some of the high level activities that we've also got going on. Uh, June is Parks and Recreation Month, uh, is obviously June right now. So we've got the walk with the mayor on June 14th and the glow ride at Sadler's Park on June 16th. So for some more June is Parks and Recreation activities, feel free to check out our website uh, for that information. We've got the Colchester Village Market on June 17th and the first hopefully annual uh, Soapbox Derby in downtown Harrow on June 24th. Uh, followed by the following Friday, the Harrow Open Streets on June 30th. And then and that'll take us into July, where we've got the Essex Fun Fest, uh, the July 6th to the 9th weekend. Um, the There will be a, another update in early July to go through the July events, uh, as summertime is a busy time. So we will be back uh, for the first meeting of July to report. And to receive the report. Councillor Hammond, Councillor Guerin, any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? That is carried unanimously. Community Services 2023-19 Special Events, McGregor Mud Mug Run, <laughs> Mud Run. <laughs> Looking for a mover that the Community Services Report Special Event Notice, McGregor. Mug run on September 23rd, prepared by Director Morris, will be received, and that council approved granting of a temporary noise exemption under Noise Bylaw 2038 from 12 p.m. to 1 a.m. on September 23rd at Coam Park to accommodate the entertainment at the McGregor Mug Run. That council approve a race route starting at Coan to Walker Road, northbound parking lane only to Parnell to the Greenway to Concession 11 and back to Coan from. 2.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. and that council approved the McGregor Mud Run for significant event status for the purposes of applying for the special occasion permit. Deputy Mayor Shepley, Councillor Allard, any questions? Seeing none, all in favor. 10.13, special events noticed, Holy Spirit Festival Road Closure on July 2nd. I need a mover and a seconder that the community services report entitled special event notice holy spirit festival prepared by director morrisu be received and that council approve closing cinesac street west between roseboro road and erie street north erie street north between between cinesac street west and munger street west and munger street west between erie street north and victoria street north and harrow between one p.m. and 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. for the Holy Spirit Festival. Looking for a mover, <laughs> Councillor Hammond, Councillor Verbeek, any questions? Councillor Verbeek. You, Madam Chair, oh, what's the Holy Spirit Week Festival? Thank you, Mayor Bondi. It's a festival that's put on by the Portuguese Club in in Harrow, where they have several different events uh, going on that weekend at the Portuguese Club. Uh, so as part of that, they have several events there. They go on the Sunday to the church for a church service, and then that's the parade. So they parade down to the church, and then after the church service, they parade back for uh, further festivities at the Portuguese Club. Councillor Allard. Um, I, I got your explanation of the going between the church and the Portuguese club. What is the different times? Like, there's four different times. They go once or twice. Mayor Bundy, so yeah, they start off at the Portuguese club and then they take approximately, it's probably going to be less than an hour, but we allow the road closure for an hour, uh, getting from the Portuguese club to the church, and then they have an hour church service. And then after the church service, they return uh, on the reverse route. That's the reason for the different times. The members of council? Seeing none, all in favor? That is carried unanimously. 1014 Community Services, the awaited gateway signage policy. Recommended actions. We'll get a mover and a seconder and then uh, our director can speak to it. That community services report entitled Gateway Signage Policy prepared by Director Morrisu dated June 5th be received and that council adopt the gateway signage policy as presented in the attached document to the community services report and that council allot $5,000 from the council contingency plan to be designated to the installation of the gateway signage approved through the gateway signage policy. 
Need a mover and a seconder. Deputy Mayor Shepley, supported by Council McGuire Blaze, and we'll go to our director and then we can comment. Ronnie, so last year during the election, it was identified that there should be some sort of policy um, to regulate the signage that we put on the gateway signs. So the gateway signage policy was created to create that consistency for what the town of Essex will permit on the signage. And the town of Essex wants to ensure that there is a regular rotation of signage to keep the items fresh and promote different initiatives throughout the communities. So the intent of these signs are to recognize uh, some items such as individual and team championships, recognition of charitable and non-charitable organizations, accomplishments and milestones, raising of public awareness in community events or causes, to celebrate national or international distinction, to celebrate those who have made significant positive contribution to the community. So the gateway signage must uh, not have any commercial, political, or religious affiliation, which would be uh, aligning with our uh, things like the uh, flag policy. It would align with that as well. So we also want to make sure that any of the gateway signage follows our current policies, bylaws, and philosophies uh, that the town of Essex does currently have. So requests must be made uh, only once per calendar year unless the organization is celebrating a significant milestone. Uh, timelines of the signage is intended to be approximately three weeks. However, this is dependent on the number of signage requests that we would have going on at that time. Um, for example, some events have specific dates that they would be advertising. So we want to recognize that uh, certain milestones may also interfere with those times. Uh, so we try and pair those together to uh, try and get that three week period, uh, but it may not always be possible. And sometimes we may have longer periods as well. Um, some of the signage uh, that is not date specific could be used as placeholders in the regular rotation to keep things fresh. So for instance, the one that was recently put up, uh, the Craig Ramsey sign, uh, that could be as part of the regular rotation uh, where we don't have a specific dated event going on, but we can use it as a place filler going forward. So the location of the signage must be in one of these three options. So you'd have to advertise in Harrow and Colchester, which has seven signs. There's McGregor and Essex Center, which also has seven signs, or you could pick all three, all both of those options, which would be uh, throughout the entire municipality. So you'd have 14 options. And the rationale for that is so that we're getting the display of all the signage, not just targeting one specific area, but we're trying to have a broader outlook on our marketing and advertising throughout the municipality. Uh, with, with it also being noted that there are certain initiatives that would be more in the southern end as opposed to uh, up here. And then for, in terms of the fee structure, there is no administrative fee to change the signage. It's simply, um, the only fee is for the purchasing of the signage uh, in and of itself. So for example, um, if the Essex Fund Fest were to have signage, they would pay for the upfront cost of it. And then year over year, it would just be a changing the date because it's a specific event. For administrative initiatives, the cost would be paid from their respective operating budgets. Uh, for public organization and organization initiatives, the proposed structure is to start with $5,000 from the council contingency budget in 2023, and then have a yearly $5,000 allowance in an operating budget. If the funds are fully utilized, the requester uh, would be able to continue with the initiative, but they would have to fund the project uh, through themselves or some sort of fundraising initiative. And with that being said, uh, if there's any questions, they'll be happy to answer. Councilor Garen. Thank you to the mayor, to uh, Mr. Morissette. It's a good policy. I like it. I'm just concerned with uh, events that might land um, on the same time frames. Like, how are we going to be settling those type of disputes? Through your mayor, Brandy. So, we do have an application process that once this is ready uh, or approved, so we will be launching that. So, we'll start to gather some of that initial information to see what those dates are. Um, in saying that, it is based on a first come, first serve basis, but the policy does allow for uh, Corporation of the Town of Essex initiatives to take um, precedent over uh, external initiatives. Further, could we, could they, there's seven signs in each area. Could we just split the signs or four, three in, in a case like that? Through Mayor Body, we certainly could do that. Uh, if that was the case, then we could work with the groups where there is some sort of conflict. Keep in mind, there also is the backside of the sign as well. So 
we may have seven sign seven signs on the front side, but there's also a seven on the back side. So we would be able to pair those together. Um, so you'd see it one direction. Is there comments from members of council? My one comment is on the $5,000. Like I feel that we probably, we're halfway through the year, we're probably not going to use $5,000. But like, but but yet we won't get to spend it another way <laughs> if we give it all to this. So I would, I don't know if we could go down to a thousand dollars. It keeps four, and then we could always come back if we go through more. Director, Mayor Bonnie. So the allowance of funds is certainly uh, council's um, direction. I do just want to point out the cost of one sign itself is approximately one hundred and fifteen dollars. So if you're looking at doing seven of those, you're already at eight hundred dollars or so just for one sign initiative. So if there was multiple, uh, just something to keep in mind when determining the amount of allocation. No, that makes a little bit more sense with 5,000. My other comment is, does it only have to be like around sports related themes? For example, what if we wanna put the senior of the year on there or the citizen of the year or like the real McCoy who like, I, you know, Real McCoy, who invented something, you know, in our region, like is historical. Are we only limited limiting it to these categories, or could council make an amendment, or is there any wiggle room in that? Thank you, Mayor Ronnie. So, yeah, of course, there is uh, the ability to do public awareness campaigns, um, celebrate national or international distinction, and celebrate those who have made significant impacts on the community as well. So. If those are things that are presented to us, then administration would certainly evaluate it and uh, ensure that it complies with the policy. And then we would be going and proceeding pending funding uh, with those initiatives as well. Council? Council Hammond? Mayor, um, uh, since we're on the topic of gateway signs, uh, the Harrow sign on the uh, West side of Harrow. Is there any uh, indication when that one is going to be fixed? Uh, I'm not personally aware of a situation with that sign, so I'd have to look into that further, but I can check with our administrative team and identify what the problem is. Talking about the welcome to Harrow, the one with like the chamber sign with the plaques on it for the service centers. That sign is done by the chamber. It broke and it was really expensive to fix. The in it was in somebody's front yard, so the chamber has decided to not replace that at this moment. Any further questions? We do have a motion on the table. Seeing none, all in favor of the report. That is carried unanimously. Drainage 202303. Council appoint an Engineer under Section 78.5 of the Drainage Act for replacement crossing of the 14th concession West Drain recommended actions that the drainage report entitled 2023-03 entitled appointment of an engineer under the Section 78.5 of the Drainage Act for the replacement crossing of the 14th concession West Drain prepared by Lindsay Dean, drainage superintendent dated June 5th be received and that council is of the opinion that the activity meets the criteria of Section 758 and appoint Rood Engineering Incorporated under Section 785 of the Drainage Act to provide the proposed minor improvements for a replacement crossing on the 14th concession drain. Looking for a mover and a seconder. Council McGuire Blaze, supported by Deputy Mayor Shepley. Any questions there? Seeing none, all in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Reports from our lone youth council member, youth council member Smith. For hanging out with us tonight. <laughs> County council update, Deputy Mayor Shepley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, this, uh, on the 7th of this week, we we're gonna have our official plan Zoom meeting. So you don't have to register to uh, watch. You but if you do a uh, plan to speak, you would have to register ahead of time, but you can just zoom in and watch the uh, meeting. Also, uh, 
getting for the county. I attended in place of uh, Mayor Bondi. She was away. Uh, Doug Ford was in the area this week and or last week, sorry, and uh, made an announcement of the continuing of the Highway 3 and the extension of the Lausanne Parkway, after which we managed to get him and his entourage into the town of Essex for about a 20 minute visit, which was nice to see. And that's it for tonight. Correspondence to be received 13.1. I need a mover and a seconder that all up correspondence listed in agenda item 13.1 be received. And we are indicated to further share such information with the community using suitable methods of communication. So need a mover that we receive all of those awesome letters of support for the reinstatement of the legislation regarding tax sale proceeds and all the other correspondence. Councillor Hammond and Councillor Allard. And all in favor of those receiving those, that is uh, carried. And any members of council want to pull out any particular uh, council for beef? Through, through you, Madam Mayor, um, uh, 13.1.3, I'd like to pull out and support. Um, for 13.1. The Corporation of the City of Cambridge, that one? Absolutely. Highway Traffic Act Amendments. And seconded by Deputy Mayor Shepley. Any further comments by members of council on that one? Councilor Verbeek, I'm not sure, did you want to speak to it at all? Um, it speaks for itself. If everybody's read the, the letters, it's, um, you know, it's just addressing all the, the traffic concerns and, and the speeding. Um, and um, as speed mitigation, um, the ability to um, use, um, you know, the traffic, the traffic enforcement cameras outside of just the designated areas that they have already. I can read it if you like, but it's just giving the municipality more tools to uh, enforce, you know, uh, traffic and um I mean, it would just, if the province agrees, then it's going to come back to us and it would be a matter of money anyway. But here she can. Oh. Um, through the chair. So namely the resolution, um, the city of Cambridge requests that the Ontario government amend section 205.1 of the Highway Traffic Act to permit, to permit municipalities to locate an ASE being an auto speed enforcement system permanently or temporarily on any roadway under the jurisdiction of municipalities. Questions, comments from members of council? Seeing none, all in support. And that is carried unanimously. Any other correspondence, members of council to pull out there? 13.2, oh, sorry, Councilor McGuire, please. Uh, thank you, through the chair. 13.1.9 um, from the County of Essex. Um, I'm just wondering if we can support that with the organic waste diversion program in Ontario. I think it's important, um, especially since the uh, the landfill is located in our in our municipality. I think uh, it's a, it's an important one to support. Seconder, Deputy Mayor Shepley, any further comments? Seeing none, all in favor of that, and that is also carried unanimously. Thank you, Council McGuire, please. 13.2 correspondence to be received and supported are, hang on, that's it. We don't have any. Whew. 14, <laughs> committee meeting minutes. We have our committee of adjustment meeting minutes, Essex Festival committee minutes, Essex Center BIA, Essex Municipal Heritage Committee, and the personnel committee meeting minutes with uh, a recommendation in the personnel committee. Let the personnel committee recommend to council the adoption of the corporate cell phone policy as presented in HR report 2023-05 by resolution at the next regular meeting. Looking for a mover to receive those minutes and move that that move that move recommendation from the PC committee. Councillor Verbeek, supported by Deputy Mayor Shepley. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? And that is carried unanimously. 15.1 Active Transportation Fund Contribution Agreement for the Town of Essex regarding County 50 West Paved Shoulder Countywide Active Transportation System CWAT program 
We will get a mover and seconder and then go to Director Drusevich. I need a mover that council direct administration to confirm to Infrastructure Canada that the corporation of the town of Essex meets all the requirements of the active transportation fund agreement between the corporation of the town of Essex and the crown and that council authorize the mayor and the clerk to execute the active transportation fund agreement on behalf of the corporation of the town of Essex and that council authorize the treasurer to make any submissions, declarations, or representations required for the receipt of funds in accordance with the active transportation fund agreement. Deputy Mayor Sheffley, supported by Councillor Guerin and Director Drusevich. Through the chair. Um, so the town was successful in applying for um, and uh, receiving uh, to be received funds from the active transportation fund in excess of $2.2 million. Um, so we are not able to publicly announce this through any media forums, but we'll advise council when we are able to do so. Um, but uh, this is for the town's contribution towards the County of Essex project. Um, the grant was uh, mainly prepared by uh, Corinne Ch Chiason, um, our town planner who also sits on our CWATS committee. So um, a, a shout out to CORE on a um, very successful grant application. So this will be uh, to complete the paved shoulders from County Road 41, uh, the town's uh, border to Dehinda Drive. And um, that's it. Exciting, she gets a big sticker. <laughs> De <laughs> Deputy Mayor Shepley. Clear we shouldn't post about this. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that, so if you heard that, Keep it to yourself for a little while longer if you're watching. All right, all in favor, unless there's any more comments. It's really exciting, all in favor. It's carried unanimously. 15.2, 2024 budget initiation memo. This is the report we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Director Drusevich. Chair, I love the excitement. Um, admin feels it too. So, um, Conveniently enough, on page seven of our new strategic plan, um, it actually mentions the introduction of a digital engagement platform to enhance public participation in the town's budget. Um, and so that is exactly our plan this year. So you'll note within that memo, um, new will be a resident tool where residents can actually go on the town website and balance their own capital budget. So they'll be given a list of capital projects and a certain amount of money, just like admin is um, tasked with each year and council. Um, and they'll be asked to prioritize which projects uh, will fit within that budget. So um, more details will be released to council, um, but we're going to encourage you to share it. Uh, it's being developed right now, so we're hoping for um, a July release. And uh, uh, other than that, the difference in this year's budget year is that um, last year we went through the extensive process of a budget reset. Uh, we will not be doing that this year. Um, and so that means that we can hopefully adopt the budget sooner. Uh, we hope to deliberate um, in December and council will receive a draft document sometime in November. Um, also, uh, this year we'll be releasing a form that council members can fill out for any uh, capital project requests they might want to see uh, deliberated upon this year. And that's it. Thank you. I can't wait. I got my list. Uh, looking for a move. Do we have a mover and a seconder for that, right? So looking. Okay, looking for a mover and a seconder that the budget initiation memo be received. Councillor Hammond, Councillor Allard, any questions, comments? Get your list. Don't, we got to tell Jason too, eh? <laughs> all right, all in favor? And that is carried unanimously. 2023 operating capital procurement report, quarter one. I need a mover and a seconder. Deputy Mayor Shepley. Supported by Councillor Guerin. Any questions, comments on this? Seeing none, all in favor. And that is carried unanimously. Uh, there's no new business that's been brought to my attention tonight, unless there's anything now. And now we will move to notices of motion. So uh, agenda item 17.1, the following notices of motion were presented at the May 15th, 2023 regular council meeting and are being brought forward this evening for council's consideration. Um, so the first motion brought forward by Mayor Bondi, which does require a seconder before discussion. 
uh, that council direct administration to review options to promote the businesses in Ward 1 during the Essex Streetscape and Victoria Avenue project construction. Our seconder, Joe, our Councilor Garan, thank you. And then we move it over to uh, Nelson Cervera, Manager of the Economic Development. Worship, I think we have a perfect uh, little presentation for council. Um, in speaking to the motion, it's it's twofold, right? It's it's not just about promotion, but it's about support. Uh, the first part of this, I want to go over what we're doing for support, what we've done, uh, and then we're going to pass it over to uh, Mark Tortola, our manager of uh, strategic communications, to go in a little bit more on the promotion design side. So next slide, please. Uh, again, the objective, uh, of course, is to support local businesses located within the Essex Center streetscape and Victoria Avenue construction zone. Um, while doing that, promoting small business to the residents of the town of Essex and neighboring municipalities. Next slide. So in anticipation for this project administration, uh, we're closely on the My Main Street program uh, up until February 2023. Um, five businesses directly in the streetscape project were supported with um, $10,000 grants, um, so uh, five each. Um, we also promoted uh, research, programming, training, um, webinars, uh, a plethora of different resources that were available through this program uh, to every single business that was available within that project area and throughout the town of Essex uh, downtown course. Uh, next slide, please. Digital Main Street is another program that we've been promoting over the past six months. Um, actually eight months. So in the fall of 2022, uh, we had the Digital Main Street team, as well as uh, our sales administration, uh, Small Business Center, complete walkabouts through uh, both downtowns, uh, focusing on uh, the Digital Main Street program, uh, which provides funding for businesses to become more digital and enhance their online presence. Um, and there are a number of businesses that took advantage of, of this funding program. Next slide, please. Uh, currently on our website, we've uh, enhanced um, grant offerings, um, information about grant offerings available through the province and through other uh, organization. So create a new web pages related to the funding and then uh, posting on social media about funds for businesses uh, in the Essex Streetscape project area. Next slide, please. Uh, we've partnered directly with Community Futures um, who are um, engaging businesses in the streetscape area uh, about some of the programming they that they offer. They're a federally funded uh, organization located at uh, on Maidstone Avenue, um, and their mandate is to support uh, local businesses in the tourism Main Street uh, sectors. Um, and they have grant programs or loan programs available up to ten thousand dollars for their micro loan program and up to fifty thousand dollars for any major expansion. So we've been promoting that as well. Next slide, please. Uh, and then we completed site visits, so uh, complete walk through the uh, streetscape area, talking to business owners, listening to concerns, uh, how we can address them from a municipal point of view. Is it um, uh, related to the promotion? Is it related to construction? Uh, keeping them updated with information about the project, how we can support them further. Um, it's not just about promotion, it's about listening, listening to concerns, uh, and we've been able to do that. So uh, from this point, I'll hand it over to uh, Mark. Uh, to go a little bit more into the promotion that we're doing, that we have planned, uh, and uh, yeah, hand over to Mark. Thank you, Nelson, and through the Deputy Mayor. Uh, so my name is Mark Tritola, Manager of Strategic Communications, and as Nelson has mentioned, uh, we just wanted to provide a brief, brief summary of what we've done so far in terms of activities um, to help guide the conversation tonight. So to start out, just wanted to talk a little bit about the campaign branding itself. Um, so we wanted to ensure that the branding of the Streetscape and Victoria Avenue project did align with the Town of Essex branding, um, and we did incorporate the tagline, Excitement is Building, um, to give a sense of anticipation for what's to come and then to play off of the theme of construction and building, um, building up our downtown core. Um, so you'll see that theme carried through all of the pieces tonight. Next slide, please. 
So we often view our website as the hub for all of our information. We want to drive people to our website, um, you know, to get the latest information and updates. And this project is no different. So we have included a portion on our website dedicated to business owners. Um, it includes, you know, uh, information on how they re can request support from the town, as well as a parking map. So residents can go online and look at the available parking within and around the project area. Next slide, please. In terms of signage, we did start the project out by installing two signs on either end of the construction zone. And uh, the purpose of the sign was really to introduce the project, again, to build excitement about what was to come um, and to get, indicate that all businesses were open during the construction period. And again, driving people back to our website, essex.ca slash streetscape. Uh, the signage is currently still in place, and we have included the renderings on the new artwork um, to give people an idea of what the project will look like in the end. Next slide, please. In terms of print advertising, uh, we did run a Shop Essex campaign to help support local businesses and to drive um, traffic from not only our own municipality, but from neighboring municipalities as well. So we ran a print ad in BizX Magazine, which is published in the June issue, just came out last week. Uh, we also ran the ad in the Essex Free Press, Essex Free Press sorry, and the Hero News. Um, and those all ran uh, last month. Next slide, please. In terms of social media, we did take a little bit of a different approach with this one. So we partnered up with a uh, local influencer. Her name is Roxana, and she runs the account My Traveling Backpack. Um, so she creates local content geared around, you know, restaurants, places to go, um, you know, what to see within the area. So she ended up creating a series of social media content for us, uh, primarily video based, and it really highlighted the project itself, um, all of the local businesses with, within the project zone, and also the parking locations. Um, so typically, you know, what it would look like if you were to visit uh, downtown Essex at the moment. So we were really happy with the outcome of those videos. Um, Overall, she did include a, uh, a giveaway as well. So we had purchased $500 worth of BIA, BIA bucks uh, from the Essex BIA and incorporated that in a giveaway just to help to drive the engagement with those pieces. Next slide, please. So a couple more examples here as well. Um, the campaign did run on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, so the primary um, element within the campaign was the video. And as of today, it had nearly 16,000 views on Facebook, 120 likes, 186 comments, and 153 shares. So it was very well received. Um, there was a lot of positive commentary on the videos, really boosting up our local businesses and speaking very highly of everything that Essex has to offer. Next slide, please. So in addition to the paid partnership, uh, we also did do our own paid social media campaign. Um, again, building off of that Shop Essex uh, theme. So we ran the following ad on Facebook and Instagram. Um, again, driving back to the website and just promoting our local businesses. Um, this campaign in particular did target our municipality as well as, well as our neighboring municipalities. Uh, we also did a series of organic content on social media just to help reiterate the message once again. Next slide, please. All right, so we will leave it there. Um, I'll turn it back to the deputy mayor for any questions that you may have for myself or Nelson. Thank you for that report. Uh, any questions? Uh, mayor Bondi. I'm just, I think it's great. It's really good to highlight what we've been doing and I just want see if there was any desire from council to do anything else. I did attend one of the most recent BIA meetings too, and they said, you know, maybe we could work better. I think Council McGuire Blaze said on, on uh, parking, like signing our parking lots, maybe that's something. I don't know. There was an example that we used during the Harrow Streetscape for just more advertising in the paper. I just wanted to, I think it's a good discussion we should be having. We should be having like reoccurring discussions about the streetscape with council to see if if we're doing everything we can. I know it's really, so just wanted to see what my council colleagues thought. Thank you. Thank you through the chair. So I just have a few points. Um, if you don't, if you don't 
mind bear with me for a minute. I also wanted to point out that the BIA currently is hosting their BIA Bucks event again, just specifically for the streetscape. So those are available. And they're also, um, they've also teamed up with Community Futures Essex County um, for small business loans. So our all of our businesses are, are aware that, um, that that is an option that's available to them. Um, it's low interest rates and, it, and it's, it's an extended period of time. So it's similar to what our businesses were offered during uh, COVID-19. Um, so that is, that is available through, through the BIA as well. And I want to give a shout out to Ken Knapp Ford for providing a shuttle service, um, which I hope people are utilizing, but what we can do to go forward or some, I have two things. Um, can we get the list of grants or additional support for businesses? Can we get those listed? I know on the website, it says, um, support for businesses call or email maybe we can tell them what we actually can do to support them. A lot of our business owners are busy. They don't have an opportunity to call and they, 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 they might feel like it's a waste of their time if it's not applicable to them. So I think maybe um, to list what is available, a little quick description of what it is that, that they might be able to get might help some of those businesses go for um, the help that they, they, that they need. The second thing, um, your ads are great. I love them. I'm wondering if we can continue with the ads. I actually have another thing after this. If we can continue with the ads, but show where our municipal parking is and how to detour around the construction. A lot of people come to Essex, they get here and then they're stopped and they have no idea where they're going. They're on these back roads. They're stopping at every single street. Um, I feel like the detour signs are just, are, are, uh, not accurate or or helpful in trying to get to municipal parking, especially for people who are coming from outside of Essex Center or who are only familiar with parking on the street. And then the third thing is additional signage um, to municipal parking. So when you do take that detour off Victoria, um, I mean, uh, Tony's Joint has a really great sign. It's just an A-frame sign at the back of the church. They've been um, allowed to park there. It's just an A-frame sign that says Tony's Joint Parking um, with a, with an arrow. And I think more signs like that towards municipal parking, like parking for stepping out uh, this way, I think that would help. And I would love to see some of our contingency fund um, money go towards some additional signage to help people find out where they need to park. So thank you. Any suggestions? Councillor Garrett. Through you. Um, yeah, I think I think the town and I think BIA, um, I think doing a lot of great things, especially with the social media and signage. Love the Kennap shuttle. Um, promotional videos are all good. Chop Essex initiatives good. I think where the hurt is for these businesses, like we talk about grants, a lot of those grants that are available, I mean, I, I think they're probably related to expansion and things like that. They're not going to help the business that are they're really suffering from losing that foot traffic. And uh, maybe we can start doing something that's more direct to home campaign. Like I've never, I don't think I recalled seeing much in my mailbox that is helping the business, even if it's on a monthly basis, just something just, driving back into uh, everyone that's a resident of our of our town to say that this is now our time, our businesses need us the most. So when you're thinking about shopping, eating, whatever, think about Essex first and 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 then go from there. But I mean, we're doing a lot of great things. It's that daytime business where I'm, I'm hearing a lot of businesses are missing because of the construction, because of the the uh, the dust and, and the people just don't want to walk down the roads. Um, I'm not sure if we, we're going to have, have an answer for it, but those are the concerns we have to tackle. I, I like this. I don't know what we're doing, Mark, direct to home, um, you know, in, in, in Essex, but I'd like to see a little bit more of that if we can. And if we got to put some money towards towards that, then we should figure that out. But I just think that if I get it in my hand or if it gets to my door, because not everybody will read our local newspaper. Not everyone will go on our website. Not everybody goes on social media. But you check your mail. And if it's in my mail, I might I might hold it. I might... It might linger around my house for a bit. And it's just a constant reminder of the business that we have. And maybe each month they can put in certain specials or direct them to their websites. Anything along those lines, I think, would, would be an added help. Is that it, everybody? 
done. <laughs> uh, well, for, for me, I think that I think all great suggestions uh, and uh, they say anything we can do to get people to walk down there and see them. I know uh, I've heard from different business owners that if uh, the excavators at this end, the traffic will be at that end or wherever they're at, they tend to, that's when that's the hardest for them. So we just got to encourage everybody, I think, to get up in Essex. And I don't know, every every way possible that we can come up with. Um, um, Mayor Bonnie, would you like to speak last? I think that there is some desire among council to spend some of our contingency funds on this initiative from what I'm hearing. And I believe, like I asked uh, earlier this week about how much was left in our council contingency funds minus the $5,000 now for the gateway signs. We should still have 25,000 or so in there. So I'm wondering if we could do like five, seven thousand for maybe it's signage, promotional, a mail, a mail out is probably like we all did them during the election. So it's probably around two thousand dollars for ward one printing and mailing, I would think. I don't know. I like that idea. Is there something that is there concrete direction that we can give administration? Right now, I think we need to give them like a you know, say use seven thousand dollars out of our council contingency fund and do ABC. Through you, I, I really like the direct to home campaign. If we can maybe have uh, administration come up with a a, th a three month to six month plan, um, I don't I don't think we use thousands of dollars on that, but it is costly to do direct to home. Um, but if we can maybe a lot, maybe wait wait for them to come back and let us know a campaign, and we they know how much money we have in contingency, and maybe they can work something like that out. I really think that get into the houses and you know and you're right we did knock on doors during the campaign so we can do the same now too counselors you, you can go knock on your neighbor's doors and remind them you know director grishovich i'm um, just for uh council's purposes the council contingency is sitting at approximately eighteen thousand after the motion that was approved tonight for the five thousand dollars okay. manager severa I think these are all really good suggestions. Uh, what I would suggest is that um, we've written a list of everything uh, council has spoke about tonight in terms of recommendations. Um, we can come back potentially at the next meeting um, with a list of everything, costs associated with those items, and council can make a decision at that time. We may be able to give council a little bit more um, update in terms of um, where those funds would come from, whether it's council contingency or if we have additional budget from other items. All in favor? It's passed. Thank you. Thank you and just as a reminder, 17.1.2 Councillor Mady's uh, motion is deferred until the next meeting. So we will move on to uh, Councillor Allard. And uh, Director Drusevich will read that motion. 17.1.3 um, was presented by Councillor Allard at the May 15th meeting. And it states that Council, recognizing that our beach roads are growing with development and improvements, direct administration to review and report on the current level of service for town owned but not assumed beach roads, and if appropriate, provide low cost options for raising the level of service of the roads with 2023 Council contingency funds and future budgets. And this would require a seconder. By Councillor Verbe, Councillor Allard, did you wish to speak to your motion? Um, Put your yeah. mic on. I I think this is a good opportunity for us to take the road millings that we get from the asphalt road millings and uh, put them on the road side roads down to the beach to uh, to upgrade their level of service of the un unassumed but town owned beach roads. Thank you, Councillor Allard. So I think at, at this point, what we would probably want to do is ask for a report from administration and uh, and see what's feasible. Any other council members want to speak to this motion? Deputy Mayor Shepley. Through you, Madam Mayor. My, my question, I you just read it a minute ago and I was in the midst of uh, directing, so I didn't pay attention. To, I, didn't, I missed it when you said, but our, our council contingency fund is at what level right now? I guess I know we just 
dropped five grand a little while ago, so I'm just curious. Through the chair, it's at eighteen thousand dollars after the five thousand. So, I, my my problem with this is, I mean, I was at the meeting and I I, I really w would like to do more. I just worry about we ha we have roads all over the municipality that are dying to be done. Roads that are are assumed and. I just wonder at what level we can do what you're looking for. I want to help, but I don't know. I don't know where where we where we find the extra money and then justify say to Eiler why they're not they're not being done right now and they've been waiting for quite a while as well. So I, I would like to see what the report comes back at before we make any drastic decisions here. The mayor to administration have have we have we looked at this in the past uh this level of service we provide like when's the last i'm sure we have when's the last time we have looked at uh the short answer is yes there is a long history of beach roads information um but, but in essence uh there used to be a beach roads committee um, that was established uh, before 2008 um, that looked to um, actually what it would take to assume these roads. Um, there was a test completed by that committee and administration at the time. Um, and ultimately, it was decided that because of the condition of the roads, trying to act transparently and equitably, which roads get which roads get done first, how do we do these roads? They all have different levels of needs. Um, that uh, any improvements beyond what exists there today would have to undergo um, improvements through the Local Improvement Act. Um, so essentially, if, if it's a gravel road, to, like the short answer is if it's a gravel road today, the, the neighbors of that gravel road would have to petition to the municipality to undergo a local improvement to upgrade that road. Um, the cost for the upgrade would be borne by the residents requesting that. Um, and at that point, the municipality would assume that newly upgraded infrastructure and own it and maintain it as we do today for that gravel road. Um, so any upgrades to those roads would be at the expense of those property owners. And then the municipality assumes that upgrade once they've paid for that. And that's very consistent with what um, occurs now for, let's say, a water main upgrade. Um, if, if a road that doesn't isn't serviced by municipal drinking water um petitions the municipality to bring a water line down their road to provide municipal drinking water that the residents of those that would benefit from that water line would all pay their equal share of the water line installation uh, once they've paid that it's installed the municipality owns and assumes that municipal infrastructure and we provide water into perpetuity the replacement cost maintenance everything um, so that is the most fair and equitable process which is you know um, which is delegated to us through the municipal act so that is the best process to undergo any improvements to um, beach roads especially the owned but not assumed roads okay so there was a report then it's an older report but nonetheless a report that may or may not be dated maybe maybe the maybe the opportunity is to share the report with council and we can even discuss at a round table before we get into direct administration to do a what may be a time consuming report on something that we're going to come back to the same conclusion that it's going to be have to be shared by the people that live on that road those roads that's be my suggestion is we maybe look at the old report digest it and have a the round table discussions on it and then maybe from there we can have an action plan for administration that's my thought director jard and then deputy mayor shepley um, so I, I'm not aware of any particular report that specifies these details. These are I'm mostly uh, taking from committee meeting minutes of the Beach Roads Committee from 2006 to 2008. Um, it's a quite a it's quite a mishmash of things that I would have to throw at you. So I actually would actually recommend to council that you do direct us to provide a report. That way we can summarize what's in those minutes, provide you with specific information. Um, I think that's the best way to provide detailed information to council. Or we could direct administration to do a report. 
Thank you for that. So we'll go to Deputy Mayor Shepley and then Councilor McGuire Blaze. Um, I did find a report. I'm probably one of the oldest ones that have been here for the longest time, maybe besides you, but I did find a report from, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> from, uh, I did, I did find a report from uh, Chris Neffy when he was in the roads department and it was on the process on how to assume a road. But I think this is like a little bit different. Deputy Mayor Shepley. Through you, Madam Mayor, my question, I'm not sure if it's for Director Gerard or Director Gersfitch. My my question would be based on what you were saying, where if, if the residents were to take owner or to pave the road, for instance, they would have to pay for that. Is there is there an option for them to pay pay for that on their taxes over a series of years, or would it be something they'd have to bear right off the up front? Local Improvement Act does allow us to uh, debenture those costs, so it is to the discretion of of uh, Director Jurisovic as to the time period, the, the cost, and the fees associated with that. But I can pass it to her. Like, so it'd be similar to how we treat um, our drainage uh, invoices right now. So um, typically, it's five to ten year debentures that we offer, um, or they can pay within um, a certain time frame. So. We'd offer the same, the same, uh, and if residents came forward, we can make one-time exemptions too. Madam Mayor, if we just include that in the that report as well, something on the along that lines would be great. Thanks. Fire, please. Thank you, through the chair. I'm just wondering um, how many, if we know, or if we can find out in the report that you're going to do, um, how many residents are actually asking for us to assume the roads and update them? Is it a handful or are most people satisfied with the way things are? I just think that if we go through this whole process and we um, are then going to add rules to the road, um, a lot of the people who live on those beach roads might not be so happy. Verbeek and then Councillor Hammond. Uh, through you, um, Madam Chair, I just I wanted to hear a little bit more about um, what you were saying about the sh shavings and millings, and, and is that something that the residents could, um, while we're dur during this construction period, while the these things are available and possibly available cheaply, is 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 that what uh, Councillor Allard is referring to? I'm, I'm just wondering, like, are you suggesting that the the residents um, purchase this while it's available, while there's ro road work being done, do their road, and then we it after? Or, like, I'm not sure. I'm sorry, I'm... I'm not sure. Maybe you can answer that, and then we'll go to Councillor Hammond. Here. Um... Not exactly asking the residents to assume the road first and repave it, that kind of thing. But um, looking at the millings, asphalt millings coming off of like County Road 50, could we use it into the uh, roads there? Because it's already there. And could it be used on different beach roads to upgrade their service and possibly cut down some of the grading and the uh, brine used on the roads? And uh, I'm going to ask administration to uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, to uh, in regards to Katie, Katie's question regarding the number of people that are asking. Um, through my experience, I find that it's primarily the people that have recently moved into the uh, area on that has an unassumed road and they're surprised that uh, their road's not getting plowed. So they look into it. Oh, well, you're in an unassumed road. Oh, I wasn't aware of that when I bought it, which I feel is a problem. Uh, regarding the millings, um, there are numerous uh, residents that take advantage of these things and uh, do use them. So I, I, I would encourage Mr. Adler to, um, should this not go your way, to encourage the residents that, that, is available to them and encourage them to maybe uh, upgrade their roads by using uh, recycled materials by all means. Thank you. So if it is an owned but not assumed road, that road is owned and operated by the municipality. 
Um, so I wouldn't advise any residents to place any materials or undertake any maintenance on town of Essex roads. Um, I can speak a little bit to, I, I am familiar with the, with the millings material. Um, I can speak to that a little bit. It is, it is a good material if you're looking to construct a driveway or farm access. Uh, however, maintaining that material, uh, beyond just the initial installation is very difficult for the municipality. Um, when we conduct grading of the road, we add more stone, we can scarify that stone, we can um, place water, grade it, pack it. Um, when you place millings, it, it doesn't work that way. You can't scarify it and reshape the road. You need to add more millings. So it may be that it's cheap and available today, However, it could be a very large uh, maintenance burden for the operations department to try and maintain a road that we, is unmaintainable. So I just wanted to let council know that uh, although millings may be a, a feasible option for installation today, it's not something we typically use in roads because it's very difficult to maintain. good and healthy conversation to have. I, it seems to pop up every once in a while that we talk about our residents on our beach roads. And the culture of our beach roads, like Councillor Hammond are saying, is changing because we're getting a lot of new homes down there. So I think we owe it to our residents to at least have the conversation, get the report. Any other questions from members of council? Everybody's clear on the motion. We will get a report back. All in favor? All right, that is carried unanimously. We will go to Director Drusevich. The following notice of motion is being presented and will be brought forward for council's consideration at the June 19th, 2023 regular council meeting that councillor Mady, um, that council direct administration, so it was brought forward by councillor Mady, that council direct administration to make Jackson Street south of County Road 50 a community safety zone. And we will debate that when council Mady is back next meeting. Reports and announcements from council members. I don't know if you have anything else, but okay. Councilor McGuire, please. Uh, thank you to the chair. Um, again, just reiterating, get out and support our local businesses during the construction zone. I know we've kind of said that over and over again today, but it, it's super important. Um, also, uh, we are looking right now for volunteers for the Essex Fun Fest. So if anybody out there would like to donate a few hours of your time, we would. Uh, Greatly appreciate it. It would help make our Fun Fest uh, the best yet. And uh, tickets for our Sip and Shop event went on sale June 1st. Um, so go on to the uh, Essex Fun Fest website and uh, purchase your tickets for that uh, great event. Thanks. Here, um, I've had a lot of things that are going on this weekend in uh, Colchester. We have the Fishing Derby on the 10th, and then we have uh, Colchester village market at the schoolhouse on the 17th oh and on the 11th we have car show at the transportation museum so we'll come out and support your charities okay so first off right now this week um and and next are a lot of our post-secondary um um people are graduating from college and university all kinds of going on, including Cassidy Verbeek tomorrow. Uh, so uh, just congratulations to all the graduates. And then we're going to run right into before our next meeting are all our high school students. So uh, congratulations on all the graduates. On uh, the 11th coming up, um, the McGregor Music Festival and Car Show. Um, it goes on all day. It starts at 10 in the morning. These guys make record-breaking profits for the Cancer Society every year. It's bands all day long. This year, they've added a car show component and a rib dinner. So, um, I mean, for 20 bucks, you can go out and have a rib dinner and free music and entertainment and a car show. So, consider going to Coan Park uh, on the 11th. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, um, I'll give uh, Director Morris a heads up that uh, I am told that not this Friday, but next Friday is Senior Beach Day at the Colchester Harbor, so it will be a busy weekend for you. Thank 
Mr. Morrisuit, he pretty much covered everything. Aaron? Yeah, thank you to the mayor. Just a couple more Fun Fest uh, updates. So on the website, you can pretty much find everything. That's uh, www.essexfunfest.com. Youth talent showcase applications are on online now and available. Uh, all of our scheduled events are on there. Ride all day passes are available at uh, online and at select locations. Those locations are also listed on the site. And weekend passes will be available as well uh, later this week at those same select businesses. That's it. Uh, in my other hat as chair of ELK, we have our second uh, board report open to the public on the ELK website under the board members. You can see that there is uh, open uh, board reports to the public. So that's my report today. Bylaws. By 2187, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the May 15th, 2023 regular meeting of council, moved by and supported by Councillor Guerin, Councillor McGuire Blaze. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Carried unanimously. Bylaw 2246, being a bylaw to provide for the Malden Road drain bridge at Malden MN 2449 County Road 12, Township of Colchester, needing a mover and a seconder. Councillor Hammond and Councillor Verbeek, any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? And that is carried. Bylaws requiring a first, second, and final reading. There's none there. Bylaws requiring a first and second reading. Bylaw 2171 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the June 5th regular council meeting at a first and second time. Deputy Mayor Shepley, Councillor Allard, any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? And that is carried. And we have uh, future meetings Monday, June 19th, and a motion to adjourn. Deputy Mayor Shepley, Councillor Hammond, any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Thank you for joining us tonight.